Riverfront Stadium. It's the Buffalo Bills versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By STP, makers of STP oil treatment. We've got what it takes to perform. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda values. Welcome to Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Sunny skies, temperature in the 70s. A sellout crowd on hand to see the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Cincinnati. I'm Len Berman, and today we have two of the finest young quarterbacks in the National Football League. And wouldn't either of them love to have my partner today for protection? He's number 73 of the New England Patriots, throwing a block last year against the Raiders in the playoffs. He completed his 13-year career in the Super Bowl. He was an All-Pro nine separate times. In fact, a few years ago, Sports Illustrated called John the best offensive lineman of all time. Now he's in the broadcast booth, and we're happy to have you. Well, it's good to be here. That article put a lot of pressure on me while I was playing football, Lynn, but I really feel like I'm in a hot seat up here in the broadcasting booth. Welcome to the club. And speaking of pressure, last week, the sellout crowd in Buffalo and Jim Kelly really responded, and this play was really typical. Trying to lead the Bills back, Kelly fell down. Then he got up, and he rolled out, looking for Pete Metzelaar's fake to him, and finally threw the touchdown pass that brought the Bills within four, but the rally fell short. They could not get Kelly the ball one last time for the victory. But, John, he is for real. Oh, he is for real. And he's the cornerstone for Buffalo Bills' future. I tell you, there's a big old fat offensive line, and when you can come in the huddle and see confidence and leadership in a quarterback, it's contagious, and everybody wants to perform well. The eyes really light up. Oh, they light up <laughs> all the way. On the other side, Boomer Esiason for Cincinnati. Last week, he did complete two touchdown passes to Chris Collinsworth. This one covered 28 yards. But, John, we were in Kansas City for the game as the Bengals lost, and we were surprised to see that high-powered offense struggle the way they did. Esiason is already an established quarterback in the NFL. But he can't be happy with what he performed like last week. So he's going to look to redeem himself today. So today, it is Kelly and Esiason who we expect a real shootout in Cincinnati. Oh, both these quarterbacks are going to be bombs away all day long. And John Esiason will have the first crack. The Bengals have won the toss. And Scott Norwood teeing it up for Buffalo as they try to break a string of 17 consecutive road losses. Boy, don't you know that's an onus that you wouldn't want to have on your back, and I'm sure they want to get it off of theirs. They're coming out here loaded for bear today. Or should I say loaded for bingo? Oh, that's it. Ball fell off the tee. Just a little bit of a breeze. Just a beautiful day as the, as the temperature will reach near 80 degrees. Mike Martin and Stanford Jennings deep for Cincinnati. Norwood not known for deep kickoff. And this is Martin at the eight this way and gets up to the 26 before he's finally down by Hal Garner so the Bengals who have really struggled in the month of September under the tutelage of their coach Sam White they will try to get a win here today at home Boomer Esiason James Brooks and Larry Kinneber they didn't rush for much yardage last week in their loss Collinsworth and Brown and Rodney Holman good core of wide receivers first down Esiason throwing on first down, as usual, a lot of time, wide open, Rodney Holman near midfield, first down for the Bengals. Johnson had a lot of protection that time, he had all day to throw that ball. Anthony Munoz on your left side of the stream against Bruce Smith, could be a key matchup today, and Anthony really got the better end of that deal. And look how wide open Rodney Holman is. And he's finally stopped after a 22-yard gain by Steve Freeman. So, Esiason, first down at his 49. Bengals come out on fire. Throwing again. Brooks nearly intercepted by Charles Rome, the veteran. Had a good shot. He's consoled by Rod Hill. Rome nearly had it. Rose was playing off of him, looking like he had him open to the inside, but the last minute, you can see, he just jumped right in front of him and almost picked it off. Really should have picked it off, I would think. Veteran oh, had seven interceptions last year, intended for James Brooks, who hit the turf, but... 
Jerome shut out Chris Collinsworth a year ago when the Bengals beat Buffalo. The only time Collinsworth has ever been shut out in his career. That's Brown in motion. First run of the day. James Brooks. And he is dragged down first by Smurless and then covered up by Freeman. Oh, he finally got a running play. And let's take a look at the offensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals, which is the biggest line in football. Munoz and Kazurski, Remington, Montoya, and Blados. Play they are huge. And Blados is playing right tackle for the first time. He was left guard all last year, and now he's had to learn a brand new position. This will be a third and seven in Buffalo territory. Ball marked at the 47. And maybe an audible here. Really taking their time, and look at this fire drill. Weiss is known for this. He loves to shake things up offensively. Let's see if it pays off. The rush is on. And it's complete. And Collinsworth is not shut out today against Buffalo. Short of a first down, covered by Rod Hill, who was getting the start today at left cornerback. Sonson really had the pressure that time. Sean McNanny, number 95, really got into him and, and forced him to hurry that throw. This is a fourth and one. The crowd wants him to go for it. And apparently, that's what the Bengals will do at the Buffalo 42. This could set the tempo for the game right here. If you make it, the offensive line really feels good about it. It could really have an effect the rest of the day. If shut down, then they're going to have to regrade themselves and say, hey, let's do it again, guys. White's the youngest head coach in the National Football League at 41 is a real riverboat gambler. Fourth and one. Holman in motion. And Kinnebrew has it. He is awfully tough to bring down at at least 255, if not 280 yards, but there is a flag down on the play. I saw a defensive lineman jump, but I don't know whether he was... Yeah, I think it was. The signal is call, called against Buffalo. You know, that's been a reputation for the uh, Buffalo defensive linemen, Smurlis more especially than any of the others. Offside, left tackle on the defense, first down. Hank Fuller coming back to Cincinnati where he was the defensive coordinator here. From 1980 to 83, in fact, was the defensive coordinator in the Super Bowl for Cincinnati in Super Bowl 16 in Pontiac, Michigan. And they lost to San Francisco. This is first down now at the Buffalo 36. Everyone is flanked left. Collinsworth and Brown. Now Brown heads the other way. And Kinnebrew. Brew straight ahead. Four Bills still can't bring them down. What a run! <laughs> Larry Kinnebrew, you know, this guy is something to behold. He's like a giant, big offensive guard back there. Watch this guy just plow over people. How many guys have we run over here? There's one. Nearly the official. Oh, man. <laughs> Three Look bills, four of them. Whoa, is this Larry Zonka reincarnate? It may be. He looked like it's there, didn't he? Here's that split Bengals huddle. They send the linemen out, then the specialty players. First down at the Buffalo 14. What a drive. Kinnebrew again. This team only rushed for 60 yards. Kinnebrew only had 20 last week himself, picked up 22 on the last carry. And finally, with a breather, they'll take a look at the front three. They'll try to flip-flop Bruce Smith on both sides of the line to put pressure on Esiason, but that's not working thus far this afternoon. The linebackers, Guy Frazier used to play for the Cincinnati Bengals. George Cumbie, a former Green Bay Packer. Second down and seven at the 11. Pitch back to Kinnebrew. Flag is down. Kinnebrew busted into the end zone, but we'll have to check the penalty. It is a touchdown if the flag goes against Buffalo. Let's see. It is against Buffalo. Touchdown, Bengals. Offside. Number 78 on the defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. What a drive and touchdown score by Larry Kinnebrew. We expected him 
wants to do is through the air. Half of that drive was Kinnebrew on the ground. In the last week, these guys were a little embarrassed. Today, they came out and they said, we're going to go after some folks. They got a little steam under their belt, and they are attacking today. Kinnebrew has already rushed three times for 36 yards and a touchdown. What an opening drive and breach. We'll try to make a seven with Ken Anderson holding. And it is good. So a fabulous opening drive. Seven plays, 74 yards. Bullo will now send out Jim Kelly. He's trailing 7-0. Bud Light. <laughs> Hold the chili. <laughs> and it's, if you were with us last week, our 10-minute ticker feature that's new on NBC Sports this year. Every 10 minutes, we'll give you the scores. And no scoring in the early games there. And not only is there a score here, but the Houston Oilers, who had the big win last week in Green Bay, jump out on top of Cleveland. And New Orleans has scored on Green Bay. Here, a fabulous opening drive. And Jim Breach, who added the extra point, will now kick it away as the Cincinnati Bengal offense has done more in the first four minutes than they had in the entire game a week ago in Kansas City, Justin. It's like night and day the way they came out here and attacked. It was, it was really fun to watch and have that series. Breach kicks it away to Walter Broughton at the goal line. And Broughton is stopped at the 19, and that's where Jim Kelly and company will take over. But you really have to admire what Kelly did last week. That sellout crowd, the pressure, you know, all that notoriety, the media attention. And Kelly really responded. Three touchdowns, and that's a third of what Buffalo had in touchdown passes all of last year. And he's only been with the Bills, what, three weeks now? And he's performing like that. Just think what he's going to get like when he gets comfortable with the system and comfortable with his teammates. Look for Jerry Butler, and keep your eye on Will Wolford, the rookie right guard. He tripped up Kelly by mistake three times. A week ago, first down at the 19. And Kelly will pass the first time around. This is Ricky Moore, and he has five yards, maybe six. Leo Barker making the tackle. So Kelly, just like his counterpart, throwing on first down. And fans love to see that. Well, they want to see the bomb all the time, but what they're doing, they're setting up their offense, just kind of getting a rhythm, a tempo, just trying to get all the linemen and all the players just feeling things. Cincinnati defense, front three is anchored by Tim Crumry, the fine nose tackle. Edwards and Browner had sacks last week. Linebacking core, Emmanuel King, number 90, has three sacks in Kansas City. Second down and four for 26. And a run, Greg Bell. And Bell is stopped. Solid Bengal defense, stopping Bell, who rushed for 44 yards last week against the Jets. And rounding out that Cincinnati defense, we'll keep our eye on a defensive back. Lewis Breed had an interception, the veteran. But look, two rookies out of four, and you wonder if Kelly won't try to operate Jerry Butler on number 24, Lewis Phillips. This is a third down and one at the 28th. I think he got it. No, he didn't. Emmanuel King with the tackle. They pulled, pulled the onside guard that time to kick out the outside backer, and I think he did his job. Then Ricky Moore came up and really couldn't get any drive on the people to kind of push the hole back and get it. It'll be close, though. Time out for a measurement. You know, they said Hank Fuller's game plan was maybe conservative last week. I think the Buffalo fans would like to see Jim Kelly really haul off. And not this series. They are short. And John Kidd will have to punt it away for Buffalo. So the conservative third down play does not give them a first down. And a big hand for the defense as John Kidd comes out. John Kidd's not only known for his real power in booting that uh -huh. ball, but he's also known to kind of kick it out of bounds and place it. And that's not too bad a game plan against these guys, because they do have some good returners back there. The kid will kick it away to Mike Martin. His longest return ever was against this Buffalo team two years ago. He returned the punt for 55 yards. So Martin back at about his 28, ready to receive the kick of John Kidd. Bit of a high snap, 
did pull it down. High spiral and a fair catch called by Martin at his 30. And that's where Esiason will begin this time. A 41-yard punt. No return, so Kidd does his job. We'll see if the Buffalo defense can do theirs. Bengals lead it. Panasonic. Bed sheets around, touting Jim Kelly. A lot of Bills fans on hand. But so far, it's been all Bengals. 7 nothing, and that's the man. The 11-yard touchdown run, Larry Kinnebrew. Just a little over four minutes in on the long drive at 7 nothing Cincinnati. First down at the 31. Brown in motion. Brooks. There goes the running game again. Brooks picks up 7 or 8. A week ago, they had just one rushing first down. On their first series today, they had two. They want to get Brooks on track. Didn't do it a week ago. This time, you'll notice the offense line just kind of set up like it was a pass pro. And just everybody kind of rushed, but then boom, right through the hole goes James Brooks. He's a water bug, boy. He gets out yeah. there and he skates around like everything. Picked up 40 yards against Kansas City, but they were looking for better things. See, fell a little shy of 1,000 yards a year ago. Second and two now at the 39. Fake to Brooks. And pass is complete. A struggle for a first down on the far side on the completion of Kinnebrew, who's impossible to bring down. Guy Frazier, the former Bengal, did finally. We'll see where they mark it. This telecast presented by authority of the NFL intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals and the National Football League is prohibited. And it was a first down at the 42. Kinnebrew is playing with a vengeance today. It's like he's got something to show everybody. He's coming off that ball and just pushing people back. And for the moment, Bill Johnson has replaced Kinnebrew in the backfield as Collinsworth and Brown are split out to the near side. And now a Siasen. There was a bit of a mix-up. You saw Brown start to move, and a Siasen takes a timeout. Timeout number one for Cincinnati. So, each team allotted three timeouts per half, and Sam Weiss said it's okay. We'll talk it over. They always feel better when you have a 7 nothing lead. Bengals on top. We'll be right back. This is it. Your team takes the field. Our team hits the air. NFL 86. Let's see. How many, how many guys are you allowed to have on a field? They had about 18 bills in that last tunnel. Finally ran six or seven off the field. This is the new games the coaches play to try to throw off the other squad. <laughs> Down at the 42. Brown in motion. Bill Johnson straight ahead, and the running game is working no matter who's in there. Steve Freeman finally grabbed Johnson, former USFL player out of Arkansas. That play was designed that time, Lamb, for both the offside guard and tackle pull. You see him on the right side of your screen. Play's supposed to go break between those guys. At that time, Bruce Smith over pursued the play, and it cut back underneath it. He's good read by Bill Johnson. Now, speaking of that huddle before, Shula and Buddy Ryan really got into it in the preseason. Buddy Ryan accused Shula of doing that kind of thing during the game. He said, who is he, just because he's on the rules committee? Second down at the 50. Brooks. And maybe a yard finally at the end. A lot of lateral movement from Brooks, but not much forward motion, but he did knows it into Buffalo territory at the 49, set up third down. Hey, we're having a good battle down there by number 78 for uh, Cincinnati and 78 for Buffalo Bills and you know and uh, Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith, a young guy, and he knows if he can play well against Anthony, that he can prove himself. He'll be known as a quality player. And look who's in the Bengals' offense here, a linebacker, Kiki Diayala, number 93, is that the Weeby offense there? I don't know. It's the third and one at the 49. He's got a linebacker lined up as a running back. But he doesn't give it to him. He gives it to Kinnebrew. And believe it or not, he stopped short of a first down. A big tackle from Jerry Boyarski, another former Bengal, just picked up this week by Buffalo. Big play. Jerry Boyarski's no, no tiny guy himself. He's about 290, 300 pounds. So he, does, he says, I ain't scared of you, boy. Come on in here. One more time is a measurement to see exactly where to spot it. He is short. It will be fourth down. But it's time once again for our 10-minute ticker. As we get to check out the scores around the league. 
crowd urging Sam Weitz to go for it. Raiders, a field goal ahead of Washington. Giants, a field goal. San Diego, oh, look at Buddy Ryan against his old team, the Bears. He leads it 3-0. And no changes on those scores. New Orleans, boy, Green Bay off to a real struggle this year. So, here we have fourth and one. On the last drive, he went for it on fourth down and was successful. It was a key play for him, too, and this could also be a key play. So they are one for one on fourth down conversions, and uh, here at the close to the 48 of Buffalo, we'll try for two for two. You expect Kennebrew here. And we get him. And he's got it at the 45. First down, Bengals. So White has gambled twice, and it has paid off twice. First down at the 45, thanks to Kinnebrew. Again, they go behind their all-pro offensive lineman, Anthony Munoz, number 78. And also, Bruce Deverse, for just before, he kind of got a chip, and he came off on the linebacker. You see in the middle of that pile going down backwards, the linebacker, Kiki Diallo, having fun of playing in the backfield. Get a free shot at somebody back there. First down at the 45, Kinnebrew heads to the far side and comes back. Recovered by Tally, who wants to get up and run with it. And we haven't heard a whistle yet. Tally is still running. No whistle. Tally to the five. Nobody tackled him that time, so it's a free ball. You can get up and run with it. A 50-yard fumble recovery return for Darrell Tally. Wow. What a turnaround. A fumbled snap. They had trouble with that last week. Oh, man. They haven't figured that out yet. They don't know whether it's uh, Boomer Lassen pulling out too quick or Dave Remington going. But you can watch uh, number 56, Tally. He, he says, hey, I got a shot at it. I'm going to go for glory here. Get my name in the newspaper tomorrow. <laughs> Fourth year man out of West Virginia. One of the biggest plays of his career. A 50-yard fumble recovery for Darrell Talley. Has this game turned around instantly? First and goal for Buffalo at the five. The fumble snap from Remington to Esiason. Michigan State and roll was open Kelly overthrew him Simpkins covered as you can see here both backs are running up in there like they're going to have a little play action they'll, they'll kind of make the defensive backs and the defensive runners kind of cram up in there then they had the guy beat wide open wow overthrew him inches second and goal at the five the defense has set up the offense for Buffalo. Wilkins in motion. Ricky Moore drives ahead to maybe the two. Ricky Moore was a running back at Alabama. I think he got like 600 yards his freshman year and then made like 1,000, 1,200 yards his sophomore year. When he went to San Francisco, they cut him. And now with Buffalo, they primarily make him a running back. I think he's wanting to show Hank if he'll give him the ball, hey, I'll make some yards. Well, uh, facing a critical third and goal for three. Critical from the standpoint of his offense hasn't been able to do anything this afternoon yet. Seven defensive linemen into the Bengals. Kelly rolling, throwing, and Roll couldn't hang on. That time Kelly hit him. Roll is open once again. Butch Roll. Wow. Twice in three plays, Kelly and Roll couldn't connect, and he was open both times. 
Jim Kelly looked like a little bit of a bad throw, but Jim Kelly had to throw it in that position to get it away from the linebackers. He just kind of lobbed it in there. A very catchable ball. Should have had it. So instead of a tie football game, Norwood will try to bring the Bills three. The stats from last year. Did his first 10 a season ago before hitting the uprights against this Bengal team. John Kidd holds. And the kick is good. So, the fumble recovery leads to a Scott Norwood field goal. 7-3 Cincinnati. And three Bengals, John, it should be 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, the Cincinnati Bengals got to be feeling good now. They gave up the ball, but then the defense held. Both sides of the ball for the Bengals playing good, good football. That's right. Just a 21-yard chip shot field goal for Scott Norwood. So instead of 7-7, seven, seven, it is 7-3 Cincinnati. 4.59 remaining, remaining in the first quarter. And Scott Norwood to kick it away. Mike Martin at the three. Martin across the 20 to the 23. And that's where Cincinnati will start things. A 21-yard return. Dean Prater on the tackle. And one more time. Let us check out our 10-minute ticker. See what's going on. The other scores around the National Football League. No changes there. All 3-0 on those games. Uh, our score, of course, has changed to 7-3. But the other scores remain the same. Orleans now up 17-0, and Atlanta trying to make it 2-0. St. Louis, by the way, will play at Buffalo next week. First down at the 24 for Cincinnati. Brooks. And Met head on and drops. George Cumby in on the tackle, along with Fred Smurlis. But the Bills defense has gotten stronger after that first drive as well. They have gotten stronger. They held them up most of the time. You remember, they made the fourth down, but then they had the crucial fumble. So we really didn't get a chance to see if the Buffalo defense really stopped them or whether Cincinnati stopped themselves. Second and a long eight, really closer to nine at the 30. on the far side. Rodney Holman is tied in. Rod Hill covering. And that'll be another Cincinnati first down. Three and up the yards today. They're, uh, they're looking like a whole brand new ball club. Oh, and they can mix up the plays. Use Brooks and Kinnebrew and Holman and Collinsworth. They've yet to throw to Eddie Brown. First down for Esiason at the 34. Overthrowing Johnson, then he was hit by Bayless. Trying to hit the running back. Johnson in for Kinnebrew on that play, and Esiason overthrew him. Bruce Smith and Anthony Munoz really going at each other. As I said before, Smith feels like he can prove himself against Munoz. But the other end of that coin, Anthony's been a bat, and he didn't want a young guy to get up ahead of him anytime soon. So he's kind of letting him know that, hey, I'm the bat. I'm in control here. Buffalo struggling offensively. Had three points, but that's thanks to a fumble recovery. Second and 10 at 34. Pitch back to Johnson. Johnson gets a couple at best. This will set up third and long for Cincinnati. Eugene Marvin on the tackle. Sam White, you see Ken Anderson on the near side. Uh, White signaling in the play. Sam Weiss is uh, really mixing up his game strategy today. I think he's got the Buffalo defense a little confused about what exactly he's going to do. And Esiason changing the play, I believe. Third and eight at the 36. Collinsworth now moves into the backfield. on the near side is an outlet. He looked at him, running for the first down, but he's short. 
Zayas is scrambling effectively, but he is shy of a first down, and Cincinnati will have to punt. Of course, Bruce Smith right here, the young guy. Last year, I played against him, and I knew he had the talent. I knew he had the ability, but he didn't know what to do with it. This year, it looks like he's beginning to get his feeling his oats and getting the system down and, and knowing the right kind of moves to make on different offensive linemen. Zayasin uh, finally stopped for the first time, and now we'll see what Jeff Hayes can do punting. He had a miserable opening week, the former Redskin. Had a punt block last week, only averaged 28 yards punting. And they'll take it away to Walter Broughton, who struggled as well. He had two muffs against the Jets. One led to a touchdown last week. Hayes got this one away. A good high kick, fair catch, and Broughton does hold on at the 25. A 33-yard punt, and a flag is thrown, and they're mixing it up at the 40. Stanford Jennings is in there for the Bengals. <laughs> we'll see a little tipper flare there, number 25 right here. I think I threw a cheap shot at a guy, so uh, the Bengals going to come to the rescue. will be marked off against Buffalo. The fair catch was made at the 25. They've lost, what, now 10, 15 yards on the possession. Oh, that has a few words for Rod Hill. Oh, I don't blame him. You've given up 15 yards. you forced your offense now to, to play back in deep in their own territory. It's a little scary to play back there. Unnecessary roughness. Number 25 on the receivers. It'll be first down at 10. Instead of having 20 yards behind the quarterback, now when he sets up, he's only like a yard or two from the end zone. It's safety territory. Now you're going to look at the defense come with safety blitzes, all kinds of different looks because they're in control position here. And Sam White's having a team meeting with his offense. He has to be somewhat gratified. I think he's already had a meeting this week the way they're playing today. First down at the 12. With 224 remaining first quarter, it's 7-3 Cincinnati. yard line completing to his uh, tight end Pete Messelars just short of a first down. Depends where they mark it. Kelly on first down. David Fulcher rookie covering Metzelars on the play. Metzelars a big 6-7 uh, good target. <laughs> that's the kind of quarter that's the kind of receiver a quarterback likes to look at. Somebody that's easy to see. He threw that ball up so high that the defensive back didn't have a chance. But Messelar being as high as he is, just grab, he doesn't grab it off. Let's see what Kelly does here. Kind of a free down. He has Greg Bell split out as a wide receiver. This is just second and one at the 22. Keeps it simple. Ricky Moore gets the first down to the 24. So Buffalo's first first down of the afternoon. And it comes with a minute 30 remaining in the first quarter. I think Buffalo's really trying to still get a tempo going. They're mixing the game up, trying to find out what exactly is going to work against these single defense today. They've swept a lot. It looks like they're trying to pick maybe on uh, Ross Browner's side a little bit more than anywhere else, though. Jim Richer a little late getting back to the huddle. Had to tie his shoelace. First down for Buffalo at their 24. With one minute remaining of first quarter, where the Bengals lead it thanks to a long opening drive. protection and Kelly well the protection started to break down a bit and Kelly was hit and threw the ball short Reggie Williams number 57 came in on the blitz he'll be to your right side of your screen here the fullback I believe Ricky Moore missed his block here and gave him the free shot at, uh, at Jim Kelly number uh, 12 but hey that's the franchise don't get him roughed up Reggie, the 11-year veteran from Dartmouth, supplying the pressure and creating second and 10 for Kelly and the Bills. Draw play, Ricky Moore. Picks up three to the 27. Eddie Edwards making the tackle. This will set up third and long. Faced with a third and seven at his 27. Hank 
Frank's got a thing with his uh, offense there, well, with his whole team now. He doesn't grade them on whether they get the job done, but whether they hustle from the time the ball is out to the whistle blows. Bengals have seven defensive backs, one linebacker, and three defensive linemen. Shotgun, Kelly, third and seven and 27. Look out, he's sacked. Kiki Diala. That was the linebacker who was playing offensive backfield earlier, and now he turns in his first NFL sack. Kiki Diala is known for his speeds and his quicknesses. You know, Emmanuel King is a strong guy, but number 93, Kiki Diala, is a quick speed merchant. And he just came in there and blasted Jim that time, right in the snout. The rookie from Texas ends the first quarter for Kelly on a jarring note. 15 minutes finish, the Bengals lead by four. So give some credit to the Cincinnati defense. As John Kidd will have to punt from his two-yard line. Bengals gave up a raft of points a year ago, third worst in the league, and their defense has stiffened in the first two games. A poor punt from Kidd and goes out of bounds in Buffalo territory. So Cincinnati will be in excellent position to start the next drive. And one more time, after just a 29-yard punt from John Kidd, time to check out our 10-minute ticker. Let's see what has changed. Field goal struggle in Washington. That game is now tied. The other games remain 3-0. Dallas trying to go 2-0 in Detroit. Detroit's awfully tough at home. Houston continues to lead 7-0. And Green Bay is... Uh, Back to field goal for the former Bengal coach, Forrest Gregg. So, first down at the 45 for Cincinnati, leading 7-3 as we begin the second quarter. Kinnebrew, who was such a force on the first drive, picks up close to five on that carry. Eugene Marv finally grabbed him. Number 50, Dave Remington in uh, 65, Max Montoya, really came off the ball and opened up a hole for Kinnebrew that time. I think uh, I went to eat at Max's restaurant last night. Oh, you did? Yeah. I think I now know why he moves so quick. He's going, you know, he's just like practice going after cold water after eating that stuff, man. Ooh, it's hot. Mexican food? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have to pay? Of course not. He's no. playing football, not me. All right. Just checking. Second and five at the Buffalo 40. Eddie Brown goes in motion. Makes a U-turn. Here's Kinnebrew again. The workforce today. First down and more to the 32. Charles Rome's finally stopped him, with Kennebrew having a big afternoon. Watch Max Montoya, number 65. He'll be on probably on the right side of your screen. Lead the play for Kennebrew here. He kind of, it's on the left side. We're looking the other way. He pulled out and got kicked that linebacker out. And then Brian Blados, nice. He comes right there. He's a big load, isn't he? What, 300 pounds, 310? Well, they say he's a lot more spelt this year. Uh -huh. He always wonders. First down at the 33. Bengals doing it offensively and defensively this afternoon. Bill Johnson dragged down. Eugene Marr sneaked into the Bengal backfield and made a good defensive play. Kind of had a fake reverse that time. They, yeah. Instead of going with the reverse, they faked it. And Eugene Marr, it didn't fool him at all. Watch the little cross in action back here by number 30, Johnson. He just, nobody goes for it. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't come back with the reverse though a little bit later on. It gave us something to think about, didn't it? That's right. Second and 13 is the play lost three. Back to the 36. Brooks in motion. Was it a clip or not? No flag. Pass complete to Holman. Tough block in the backfield. Uh, Saved the Siasen from the sack, and a short pass to Holman gets him only as far as the 35 with Guy Frazier covering. Darryl, Darryl, Darryl Talley, number 56, really gave a lot of size and the pressure that time, but he showed great poise in staying in there and completing the little... No huddle, quickly. Third and 12 at the 35. Of course, there's no huddle. You have to tell everybody what the play is. Eric Caddis, the tight end in for Rodney Holman. They stand around, uh, waiting to hear the play. Finally, deploy the wide receivers. Clock is down to five seconds, and they get the playoff. Throwing over the middle. 
Right. Leads to Eddie Brown. Brown heads to the outside. Brown for the touchdown. to Eddie Brown, the second-year man from Miami, gives the Bengals a 13-3 lead. Great play that time. Eddie Brown just kind of came underneath the deep zone but right behind the linebackers. He could have run into a perfect pattern. Reach. Try to make it 14, which is as many as they scored a week ago. Does it? So it is 14 to 3, and we still have 11:45 remaining in the first half. The Florida Everglades and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Everglades means airboating as close as you can. Today's game is brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in '86. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Life, it doesn't get any better than this. And by National Car Rental, you deserve national attention. Back at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Len Berman, along with John Hanna, on the strength of a 35-yard touchdown catch. Eddie Brown is now 14 to three. It comes to Walter Broughton. Broughton has an opening. Heads to the outside. Walter Broughton all the way up to the 45. A tremendous kickoff return by the former New Jersey general out of Jacksonville State. 42 yards. But let's go back a moment and take a look at Esaias into Brown, which gave the Bengals the lead. John, let's watch this pattern here by Eddie Brown, number 81. As you can see, he gets over the top of the linebackers. But like as before I said, he is underneath the safeties. And he just a clear sailing for him. Well run pattern. And a good throw by Assassin. <laughs> nice little choke there at the end. Smell the end. Look at that. Bill's just 14 total yards offensively. And Kelly has to pull a rabbit out of his hat. First down at the 40. Pitch back to Rob Riddick. And they keep it conservative and gang tackles after a gain of about two. Barker making the stop and how quickly the old hand on the wall moves don't it 10 minute ticker time and no changes in those scores defensive struggles and uh, no changes in those scores either last 10 minutes uh, have been defensive minutes around the national football second and eight now ball to 43 and again a running play Rob Riddick went to the 45 and Bill's fans watching now, John, as a flag is thrown, have to be wondering uh, why it doesn't uh, get a little less conservative here, trailing by a low. Well, I don't think they really, I don't think they really, uh, you know, are getting more conservative. They're just staying with the game plan. It's only 14 to 3. You know, you go 11 points down. That's not any real drastic score at this uh -huh. point in the game. So you can pretty well stick with your game plan and, and don't try to hurry up things and, and panic. And I, I think they're sticking with what they came in here to do today, and that's pound the ball a little bit, forcing the defense to come up and cover the run, and then bang, go for the big one. Quite a discussion out there today. They want to mark the ball before they uh, step off the penalty. The indication seems to be against Buffalo. Intentional place for us. Went against Barker. That's right. Buffalo yeah. offense was backing off and led us to believe maybe the call was against them. But no, and it was a first down by penalty for the Buffalo Bills with the ball just nudging into Cincinnati territory just across midfield. Well, let's see if he runs or throws on first down. Another run. Riddick for the third consecutive time and gets some yardage down to the 45. Riddick rushed for all of 19 yards a week ago. Richard talking to Lewis Breeden. 
I don't think they get a little excited that time. You know, Lewis kind of gave a late shove. Uh, I think he got a little upset that somebody was blocking him all the time. And he just wanted to push him back over the pile and let him know he was boss. Buffalo is sick with that running game, though, and they're going to pound him for a while and, uh, until things can kind of settle down a little bit. Second and five at the Cincinnati 45. Inside of 10 minutes remaining in the half. Riddick for the fourth time. Gets some running room. A little short of a first down, but close to the 40. So Rob Riddick, fourth-year man out of Millersville, Pennsylvania, becoming the workhorse. Again, they're coming after Reggie Williams and Ross Browner. You know, they've, that's a lot of times they've attacked those guys. And, uh, you know, they seem like they're just going to keep on doing it. But they are really going after those guys. Marked as a first down at the 40. He'd get enough. Seeing a lot of Rob Riddick. Wonder if something's wrong with Greg Bell, John. First down at the 40. This time it's Byram. And Byram gets six yards. Carl Byram, the rookie from Mississippi Valley State, finally Tim Crumry. So the normal backfield of Greg Bell and Ricky Moore is giving way here to Rob Riddick and Carl Byram, and they are grinding it out. The offensive line right now has got to be feeling good. You know, they're coming off, they're getting into the Cincinnati linemen and pushing them back. you got to get a little confidence going. They're feeling like, hey, we're controlling this game now. We're moving them. And it's an important drive for them right now. they got to get back in this ball game. Well, he's checked with the sideline. The word is nothing is wrong with Greg Bell. It's just Rob Riddick is getting the call. He gets it again. And straight ahead he fights and perhaps another first down. So this really comes as quite a surprise. Here the team comes out down by 11 points, put in different running backs, and start pounding the ball. And you have to give them some credit. Of course, the offensive line. They, they get down the stands. They got the weight on their hands, and they're coming off the ball now. That's old-fashioned football. That's the kind you like to play. You like to do as an offensive lineman. But you're not sitting back on your haunches waiting on somebody to hit you. You're going after somebody else. Six plays, all running plays. No passes. And there he goes. Byram's open. He's got him. And perhaps, well, maybe just a yard short of another first down. Bark recovering. Pass going to Carl Byram, the backup fullback. Ooh. Again, you know, Buffalo pound, pound, four yards, six yards, five yards. All of a sudden, the defensive backs say, hey, wait, we got to help our defensive front. So they start getting closer and walking up. Now you go to the pass. Get them start playing the run, then boom, here you go. And the game is not out of hand for Buffalo yet at all. This is, this is right. very much a part of this thing. This is a very impressive drive. Began back around their 40. Second and about a yard and a half. Ball just outside the 20 formation back to you. Oh, and a move. That's what they couldn't afford on the left side. Ken Jones, number 72, looks like he kind of went a little bit too eager that time. Huh? You know, that's, that's the thing. He could kill the drive. Start. Number 72 on the offense. Still second down. There's nobody, it, it kills an offensive drive. They, you know, you're with a ball control type offense where you're only getting four or five yards of carry. Having offsides is very, very costly to you. And, and there's nobody feels any worse, though, I'm sure, yeah. than Ken himself. Because he's a pro, and he knows what it means right now. He, they've got to have points. But really, the old bugaboo strikes the most penalized team in the league last year, and that one hurt them. This forces a second and six. And Un-Kelly-like numbers, if you follow his career at Miami and in the USFL. Second and six, just outside the 25. The rush is on. They got him late. Completed it to Riddick. And Barker covering on the play. And they did get to Kelly, but after he released it, which will set up third and six. It was number 90, Manuel King can't put the pressure on, but you can see. Ooh, he dropped it. That's what that's the third drop ball of the day that Kelly's put in somebody's hands. All you can do is let him put the, the ball there. The other guy's got to help finish off the job for him. One would have been a touchdown down the other way. That's right. Which roll drop. So third and six at the 25. And well, you can't call it a critical play at this point, but a, an important one nonetheless. Butler, the quiet man in motion. Oh, 
over the middle, wide open. This time it's grabbed by the big target, Keith Metzelars at the 10. A big 15-yard pickup at an important time for Jim Kelly. Another thing that showed the maturity of Jim Kelly, you know, he came in here, he's new. Cincinnati shot everything but the kitchen sink that time as far as blitzing was concerned. Watch all those guys come in. Xander's the only linebacker back there. And Xander, the big, tall guy, just reaches up and grabs that ball way out of the air. You have to love a target like this. Metzelar 6'7", and gets up even higher with the jump. What do you figure, about 12 foot in the air, that ball? <laughs> well, in any event, it's the first third down conversion that we've had this afternoon in the game. First down and goal from the 10. Takes back. Riddick, he's been a big factor. Loses the helmet and the ball. And Cincinnati nearly fell on it. Riddick lost everything but the kitchen sink on that play. He lost his hat, lost the ball. What was really scary is when his helmet came off, you know, people were live. still pounding him. You know, the, the referee, you know, it's almost like a knockdown in a, a boxing match. I mean, this guy's helmet's off. Blow the whistle, protect that guy. See, he's still alive. What's this? That's scary, man. Helmet in the ball. I thought the Bengals had the, the beat on it right there. And Fulcher couldn't grab it. And the Bills are lucky to get it back at the six. And Riddick will try to figure out a way to keep the helmet on this time. Pick up a four rod in that wild play. Second and goal. Riddick again. Hangs on to everything and scores. Good run. What a drive. Most of it manufactured by this man. Rob Riddick out of Millersville, Pennsylvania. That was a nice run. He followed in behind number 35, Carl Byram. But with the last minute, he saw it open and cut back behind it and went back all the way past the, uh, the center's block on the other side of the field. Great <laughs> run by him. Nice eyes. An important drive at a critical time for the Buffalo Bills. And Rob Riddick pushes it in from six. And for Rob Riddick, even though it's his fourth year in the league, that is his first NFL touchdown. And Norwood missed it. Norwood shrank the extra point. It was wide. So it is 14 to 9. As Rob Riddick happy to hang on to his helmet on that carry. He's finally got a score. Next time you go away for the weekend, turn your weekend into a national holiday. I'm a bit surprised. I thought they'd come out throwing trailing by 11, and they just pounded it out. Simple football. Jim Ringo, the offensive coordinator, likes old-style football. Mm -hmm. and he's a patient man, and he's he's going with it. He's going to keep this running game going and attack people he started out to go with. Well, he was an old-style guy with the Green Bay Packers. And I know uh, you, he coached you for a while. Yeah, he started with us in 78 and uh, left about 81, 82, somewhere in there. Norwood kicks it short. Stanford Jennings on the far side. And Jennings still on his feet for the 35. So a nice little return by Stanford Jennings. Let's take a look at Rob Riddick. Uh, he was placed instead of Greg Bell on this series. Rushed seven times for 28 yards. And here is first NFL touchdown. Well, number 35. Lower the boom right there. And then Riddick saw the block. He cut back inside. Nice run. And a critical touchdown at an important Offside. time of this ball game. The is declined. It's first down at 10. Well, Red Cashin tells us an offside penalty was declined on the play, so the first down for the Bengals. It is now 14 to 9 after Scott Norwood missed that extra point. Fun game developing here in Cincinnati. We still have 539 remaining. Second quarter, and it looks like Esiason is audibleizing. Changing the play. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Pitch back. Hit a boot. And this time he is ankle tackled. Good play by Martin Bayless. And guess what time it is? Ten minutes have passed. That's it. Oh, let's check out those scores one more time and see what's transpired. The Giants, the only new scorer on the board, they lead San Diego 10-0. How does San Diego go from scoring 50 to nothing? And the score there changed on the, our game. 
behind New Orleans, leading Green Bay 24-3. If you wonder why we show our own score, even though we're at the game, it's all computer-generated from New York. It's an interesting technology, and uh, all of our broadcasts get the same computer printout, so that's why it includes our game. Messiah's been showing to open Rodney Holman. And Holman out to midfield. 15-yard pickup on the play. Interesting play that time. Cincinnati has been having a lot of success with the run when they pull both the guard and the tackle. And as you can see, Max Montoya and Blade 076, 574 do pull, but then they run a little play action off of it. Get the linebackers out of the way so they can complete that pass. Last week, Sam White said, oh, Siason was throwing a little bit of sidearm. I think he'll take the sidearm delivery on that one. It was totally from the side, and uh, he completed it. So when it's good, uh, you can throw any way you want. Hey. Bottom line is what counts. First down from the 49. And Brooks scrambling. Finally brought down after a pickup of five to the 45. Eugene Marv on the stop. Brooks, little guy hard to bring down. Well, he's like a ping pong ball. He's just <laughs> bouncing all over the place. But every time he bounces, he picks up another yard. John, let's pause briefly now for a station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WGRZ TV 2 Buffalo. Len Berman along with John Hanna. The Bengals lead the Bills 14-9 with three and a half minutes remaining. And an eventful first half. Action-packed. Interesting football. Kelly has not thrown the ball all over the yard. Tina Brew. And now they're having success against Tina Brew. Gang tackled by the Bills earlier. Tina Brew had the beat on our MVP award. But down here yeah. recently. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised we didn't see a lot of and start going to the air a little bit more now that they're playing them so tough. No, no huddle. Boom. And now the whistles fly. The Bills didn't have any time to get their men off the field. And there were still Bills on the field on the far side. It was really a fire drill and the, and the play got cold. And let's see uh, who gets whistled. Uh, There's no play, no foul. It'll be third down. <laughs> what you just saw, ladies and gentlemen, didn't happen. Erase it from your mind. There was no play and no flag, and let's just back up the tape to where we were. Apparently, what happened is they snapped the ball before the, the official blew, the, blew it live uh, uh, okay. because he hadn't set the ball yet. Okay. Official has to, what they say, wind it. He has yeah, to, uh, wind it is the terminology. I just wait for my center to get down with the ball and just wind up with it, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> That's it. Look at what he's doing. Well, Esaiason winning the passing battle, but Kelly's successful with the ground game from the shotgun formation. Third down. Wide open, and Brooks was just overthrown a bit to the right. He had daylight, and Esaiason just didn't connect it. There's still a lot of pressure on Esaiason, though. You can see here... Number 76, uh, Fred Smurlis, and all of them really getting some penetration in there. Number 99, uh, Hal Garner, mm. they're all in his face. Brooks he's has daylight it. here, and a Siasin just there. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess you'd say a, a pro should make that catch, but uh, it wasn't the easiest of tries for Brooks. It was, but it was catchable. It would have been pretty. Yeah, it would have been. We can show a replay of it. <laughs> you bet. Maybe do. <laughs> Jeff Hayes on the low snap. Gets a good high kick. So Hayes much improved from a week ago. And oh, what was that? There was no fair catch call. And finally Rod Hill just ducked out of the way and the ball went out of bounds inside the 10. So with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining after a 35-yard punt, we've got a timeout in Cincinnati. Cincinnati Reds, we can remind you the next week on the game of the week, Red Sox and Blue Jays. We'll see if Jim Rice stays in the playing field this time. And uh, White Sox against the Angels. Next Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, Major League Baseball Game of the Week. See Jim Rice yesterday had his hat taken by a fan at Yankee Stadium, and Big Jim went charging up into the stands to get his hat back. So that's a valuable piece of property to him, you know? I and mean, this interview, they might go to the World Series, so they might want to keep that for a souvenir. Here's his hat. First down at the 9. It's back, but they keep it simple. Riddick breaks free again. Riddick. You see that? Uh, Good push-off from Riddick. A uh, little stiff arm there. Yeah, yeah. on Bobby Kemp. And as we near the two-minute warning, it is time once again for the 10-minute ticker. 
And nothing has changed on the first panel. Go. Change it. And uh, our score continues to change, but not the others. Houston in a defensive game, 7-0. And uh, Atlanta has added a field goal on that one. So this will be a first down at the 23. As you see Kelly, who is dwarfed for a moment by Keith Metzelars' tight end. Two minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the half. They're trailing by five. Fakes to Riddick this time. Protection, pass to the far side to Byram. And he gets out of bounds, and they will get another playoff before the two-minute warning. So Byram smart to get out of bounds, the short pass from Kelly. Well, executed offense right now that really conserving the clock. You know, this was an important drive for them in the fact that they trail in this game. Now they've got a chance to get out in there, at least get a field goal and go into halftime feeling mm -hmm. pretty comfortable sure. with what they've done here in the second quarter. Absolutely. They still have the two-minute warning plus three timeouts to work with. Oh, they, they, their offense is really playing good football now. Second down and three at the 30. for a first down at the 35 and now it's the two minute warning Carl Zander covering on the play so with two minutes remaining in the first half it's Buffalo ball they trail it 14 to 9 in numbers to know two minutes remaining in the second quarter Cincinnati leads Buffalo 14 to 9 the Bills have a first down at their 36 and Jim Kelly uh, interesting statistics especially when you compare them with a week ago I mean you don't have to pass for 300 yards every game. In fact, it's been shown that just because you pass for 300 doesn't mean you'll win the game. But today, as you saw, 6 of 9 for 53. A week ago, he passed for 292 yards against the Jets. A reminder, coming up in just two more minutes of playing time, NFL 86 will have all the scores and highlights for you. Got Metzelars one more time in Cincinnati territory down to the 40. Oh, it's ruled no catch. What? And Kelly's run up field saying, What? Kemp and Billups covering. And this is what happened here. It looked like a catch from my angle. And the body maybe screened us. Let's see. Uh, he didn't have control of it as he was going down. He was must have popped three, yeah. So the call is made, and uh, what looked like a good gainer into Cincinnati territory is negated. He did not control. You have to control it and take two firm steps. Do you think the guys up in the box with the NFL are looking at the replays of that right now? Well, they were. I mean, I'm sure they had their finger on the button. Now, a replay official today is Ralph Vandenberg, who was a back judge for 18 years. And I'm sure he took a look and confirmed that it was okay. Second down to 10 of the 36. Drop play with it. And get a yard. And the clock continues to run. It's kind of a peculiar yeah. after the two-minute warning, you know, to have the running game. Now you'd think you'd go straight to the uh, passing attack. They have three timeouts, and they're not taking them. Huh. 88 seconds remaining in the half. This will be third down and 11. At the 35, and Buffalo fans are saying, well, if you throw a bomb for a touchdown, you're forgiven, but... Down to a minute 14 remaining. Short jump off. Nobody was in the area. No flag, but that was awfully close to being intentional grounding. Well, I think any time the two minute one, the quarterback is going to just kind of dump the ball like that. But uh, and, and the officials pretty lean in that with everybody in the NFL. But Eddie Edwards, number 73, really put the pressure on Jim Kelly. The Bills did not use their timeouts. And the only advantage to that is it gives Cincinnati just a minute six to operate with. But Cincinnati has two timeouts of their own. But uh, Kelly was under pressure there. And it looked like he just dumped it off to avoid yardage, which could have been construed as intentional grounding. But no flag. And now John Kidd to punt. And another good one. The punting's been good today. Mike Martin with 22. And Martin scampers up to the 32. A late flag is thrown with 55 seconds remaining. 43-yard punt and a 10-yard return for Martin before Guy Frazier made the tackle. Well, we'll have to see what the flag is. 
Bengals will have 55 seconds and two timeouts to operate. A legal use of hands against Cincinnati will push them back even farther. Illegal block during the run back. Number 25 of the receivers. First down and 10. Oh, it's whistled against Rod. Uh, check that against John Simmons. There's Jim Kelly. He's got to be feeling a little... Uh, a little under the pressure right now. You know, he had that two minutes going there. He, at the same time, he's got to feel comfortable. He's delivered the ball to those receivers, and they just haven't held on to him. But he's still got his composure. He's not mad. He's not ranting and raving. He's relaxed. He's still ready to play football. Hey, he had a good week. He signed the big radio deal in Buffalo, became a spokesman for a bank. I mean, hey, he'd be relaxed, too. That's the furthest thing from his mind today. Yeah. First down at the 21. Bengals run some points. Pressure's on, a science, and going deep. He's got Collinsworth, and it's Intercepted. picked off. Intercepted. Steve Freeman, the veteran. And a flag is down, so hold up everything on this one as well. But he had Collinsworth, under threw him a bit, and Freeman picked it off. pressure he did have the long the bad but yeah. Steve Freeman, Freeman playing that free outfield that center field position just came over there and grabbed it off I think he outran the, outran the Sison's arm that time what a week for Mississippi State Steve Freeman playing to see what number career game but his Mississippi State team is the surprise Cinderella team in the NCAA this year beating Tennessee yesterday 2-0 and, and Freeman with his first interception of the year Esiason picked off second turnover for the Bengals today. That would have been Steve's uh, first interception, I believe, since 1984 or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So, with 44 seconds remaining, let's see the Buffalo strategy now as they start at the 25. Now Kelly wants to throw. And he's hit, and that's intercepted. Kelly's first NFL interception turned in by Leo Barker. He was hit that time. He just he didn't have the accuracy because he was going to the ground. Ross Browner supplied the pressure, and Leo Barker will be able to tell his grandchildren that he was the first NFL player to ever intercept the pass thrown by Jim Kelly. Leo Barker. Ross Browner made the hit. Bang. Right he was releasing the ball. It took the accuracy right off. That was, that was the blind side of the field. And uh, Ross Browner is kind of a floater now. You know, they've been kind of playing him on the left side, on the right side. He's supposed to find the weak link of the offensive line and attack that point. So Barker intercepts Kelly. And now the Bengals have 37 seconds to move 20 yards. First down. Big break for them on the Barker interception. Skinner Bruce. Straight ahead for three. The crowd, I, I'm not sure if they're booing or yelling brew. The Bills say uh, it was a fumble, but that's not the call. Cincinnati does take a timeout, and they'll come back in good position. It'll be one half, John. Sison is doing his thing. He's throwing the ball and doing it. Jim Kelly, his offense is going with the running attack. It's a whole different thing. We were looking for the throw. They're running. I wonder if they're going to open it up now in the second half. You wonder. Okay, so that's the story from here in Cincinnati. Let us now go to Frank DeFord of NFL 86 and hear his commentary about week number two in the National Football League. You know, we believe halftime is a time for quiet reflection. That's why we've summoned Frank DeFord. And Frank... You often hear a team's executives referred to as the club's brain trust, but sometimes that phrase doesn't fit, right? Not exactly, Bobby. And also, something I've never understood in sports is why we always call the office the front office. Why don't we say that Lee Iacocca is in the front office at Chrysler? He's just in the office, right? But sports executives always have to be in the front office. Well, maybe it's because most people in the front office just aren't smart enough to get a job in a real office office. For example, the case of Herschel Walker. Never mind what Walker is doing for the Cowboys. I want to know why it's the Cowboys he's doing it for. Walker was a Heisman Trophy winner and a demonstrable all-pro in any league. There were no flutie factors either. He possesses every possible, possible physical attribute. Nice guy, too. 
Incredibly, though, 130 other players were chosen in the draft last year before Dallas named Walker. Now, how in the world do you account for that? It's simply inconceivable to me that constitutionally dull and rotten teams like, say, the Colts or the Falcons would draft off the computer round after round, picking backup tight ends and other replaceable spare parts when they had the chance, any chance at all, to land potentially the finest running back and the best drawing card of this era. Now, yes, I know that Walker was in the USFL at the time, but that league was already on shaky ground. And besides, only a cursory look at Walker's contract would have shown that he could be a free agent soon enough. Indeed, it would only have been a small gamble to pick him on the very first round. After that, well, on the fifth round, when Herschel was finally selected, of the 27 other guys picked, only 11, well less than half, even made the NFL. This year, the same numbskull general managers who passed five rounds on Walker let Al Davis of the Raiders steal Napoleon McCallum of the Naval Academy in the fourth round. And that lesson was already writ broad across the heavens for the Cowboys drafted Roger Staubach more than 20 years ago and then patiently waited for him to lead them to the Super Bowl. Red Auerbach got Bill Russell because a lot of NBA front offices couldn't wait a lousy half season for while he played in the Olympics. Eight NBA teams passed on Larry Bird just because he had another year of collegiate eligibility. And Auerbach stole Danny Ainge another way. It's no secret why the same teams, like the Cowboys, like the Raiders and Celtics, keep on winning, even if they don't have the top draft picks. It's not a front they have in the front office. It's real brains and imagination in the office. One thought about that, Frank, and I agree with you. So many of these alleged Sharpies have missed golden opportunities through the years, but it seems that the teams that are inclined to make a gamble on a future possibility are teams that are already well-established. Uh, the Celtics are a good team, the Cowboys, and they don't feel as if they need immediate help. And, and beyond that, I think perhaps even more so, is the continuity in the front office. Auerbach, Davis, Gilbrand at the Cowboys, and so forth. These are the people who stay there year after year. Perhaps that's the most important thing in establishing a team, not the players, uh, but the continuity up front. Paul, who's the smartest guy you ever played for? Uh, oh, it has to go back in grade school. Uh, <laughs> probably the smartest guy for play. I, you know, I, is this taking away now, Frank? It must be that the, uh, the best player available doesn't work anymore because obviously Herschel Walker was the best player available, and he would have been available. Everybody knew that. They throw that away. The smartest guy I ever played for, Al Davis. You played for him when he was an assistant coach, right, with uh, right. the Chargers. Yeah, he, and also he had recruited me to college. At the Citadel. The reason I say that, because any coach that I played for that was smart enough to get me has to be the smartest coach that I ever played for. Yeah, and you know, when people talk about the legend of Al Davis, one of the first things they cite, beat Pete Rozelle in court, coached Paul McGuire. We'll be back with more of NFL 86 in a minute. <laughs> I warn you. I warn you! If I can't get justice here, I will get a gun and I'll do it. My Scoring game. Barr and Mosley exchange field goals. Redskins Raiders tied at three. Marcus Allen, 61 first half yards in pursuit of his 11th consecutive regular season game. Over 100. The Giants and San Diego have just gone to halftime. Giants lead it 10 to 7. They control the game early. At one time, they had a 10 0 lead. Let's take a look at some highlights. You'll see Phil Sims, the Giants quarterback on the sideline. Perhaps he's calling for some healthy wide receivers. At one point, with their receivers core banged up, they had to put Jeff Hostetler, their third string quarterback, at wide receiver. They also try the play that worked for John Elway and the Broncos last week, but Phil Sims drops. Tony Galbraith's pass. Sims is better at throwing the ball. Witness this one to the guy who's becoming one of his favorite targets, tight end Mark Bavaro. The 29-yard reception sets up a one-yard scoring jaunt by Joe Morris, and the Giants have a lead at that point of 10 to nothing. However, the Chargers were eventually able to get it together, but you'll see here that throughout the first half, the Giant defense played tough. The pass intended for Winslow, and boy, is Kellen ever racked by a couple of giant defenders. They've been blitzing Fouts all day and with a lot of success, but when you blitz, you're going to get some of these talented guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. Gary Anderson here beats the giant defender, 29-yard touchdown pass, and the Chargers move to within a field goal they have just reached halftime. They are at halftime at Soldier Field. What a story might be developing there. Emphasize might. Intercepted Mike Tomzak a couple of times in the first half. The Eagle defense did. The 46 is working. Buddy Ryan leads Mike Ditka 3-0. Walter Payton went past 15,000 career yards in the first half. 
Dallas has just gone to halftime at the Silverdome, where they lost to the Lions last year. They have a 17-0 lead. Lion fumbles have hurt them. James Jones, who gained over 170 yards last week in a Lion victory, fumbled at the 5 in the second quarter. Tony Dorsett scored on the next play. Then Danny White hit Timmy Newsom for a 14-0 lead, and Raphael Septien added a late field goal in the first half after Detroit fumbled a punt. Cincinnati-Buffalo, that's the game you're watching. 21-9 is the score at halftime. The Bengals trying to avoid another bad start. They've gotten off slowly the last three years. Today, they're trying to even their record at 1-1, one and, one, and let's take a look at some highlights from that game. Jim Kelly, during the course of the first half, suffered his first NFL interception, and it figured in one of the Bengal touchdowns. Let's take a look at the Cincinnati running game. They couldn't establish it a week ago against Kansas City, but Larry Kinnebrew really had it going on this drive. Is he ever a handful just dragging guys with him for that 22-yard gain? And then later in the same sequence, he goes in from 11 yards out, bowling people over in the process. The flag you saw was against the Bills, and the touchdown counts. 7-0 in favor of the Bengals. Then Boomer Esaias into the air, twice for Eddie Brown. This one covers 35. What a group of receivers he's got. Brown, the second-year speedster from Miami, the veteran star Chris Collinsworth, and, of course, the rookie Tim McGee from Tennessee. It'll be Brown again with the score at this point, 14-9. Brown on the receiving end of this 17-yarder, and that is where they stand at halftime after this touchdown, 21-9 in favor of the Bengals. As Len Berman has pointed out to you, undoubtedly, the Buffalo Bills have not won a road game since December of 1983. Houston playing at home against Cleveland. Halftime scores 7-3 in favor of the Oilers. They have just gone to the half at Atlanta. The Falcons lead the Cardinals 17-13. O.J. Anderson, the Cardinal running back, didn't make the trip, but we're told he has a legitimate hamstring injury. We checked that out. It is not related, apparently, to his discontent of earlier in the week where he claimed after Sunday's game that he wanted to be traded. And New Orleans and Green Bay... 24-3 to at halftime in favor of the Saints. The Packers lost at home 31-3 to Houston last week, losing here 24-3 at halftime in New Orleans. Is Forrest Gregg in trouble? He's in an awful lot of trouble. You know, he made a statement that we're going to change our entire team so that we won't be 8-8. Eight and eight. And the changes that he, he has made, Ferragamo is not a great quarterback. We know that he might have been at one time, but he's a bomb thrower, and that's all he can do. He's thrown an interception for a touchdown. I just think that they, they may go 0-16. Uh, and Wait a minute. Change it. Even Buffalo and Tampa won a couple each last year. After watching Green Bay, I don't see how. They've got to do some, they've got to make some more drastic changes. All right, all you fans watching in the Green Bay area, <laughs> the letters are to be addressed to Paul McGuire, and we'll address ourselves to Len Berman and John Hanna, throwing it back to them at the field. And welcome back to Cincinnati, everybody. Len Berman along with John Hanna. Our halftime score, 21-9. to Buffalo fans will say that should easily be 21-14. The missed extra point. And they only got three instead of seven after a big fumble recovery. But a first half really dominated in the statistics by two touchdown passes from Boomer Esiason to Eddie Brown. Any big surprises for you? Well, I think the biggest surprise would be Buffalo's offense. Uh, the way they moved the ball has been strictly with a run with Riddick. Erratic. He's been That's going right. and plowing the ball up in there. That's right. Uh, Rob Riddick getting the call. Greg Bella, he was not injured, but they just decided to go with Riddick in the backfield instead. Let's show you a couple of the first half highlights, starting with the opening drive for the Bengals. They marched right down the field. The big man was Larry Kinnebrew. Here's the touchdown, John. Mr. Kennebrew, number 28, and I do mean Mr. because of the size of that guy, <laughs> right. he was just running over people that first series, and it was deserving that he got the first score because he was like a big bulldozer plowing over people. This could have been a big break for Buffalo, and it should have been, and was only three. The fumbled snap, Remington and Esiason, who had that problem a week ago, there was no whistle, so Tally decided to try to tally. No one had touched him. He can get up with the ball and run. And this is the kind of thing that Hank Bull is looking for. He's wanting the turnovers. He's wanting a big play guy on defense. Pally supplied it, but they didn't get seven. They should have had seven on that. They only got three. And then really the play of the game and what has opened up the margin now for the Bengals, this last touchdown with just 22 seconds remaining in the half. Well, again, set up by a turnover by Buffalo. Right. Uh, they turned the ball over under pressure. J uh, Jim Kelly kind of threw an interception. And you got a great reception by Mr. Brown here. Wide open early. Assassin finally found him. He was breaking on. He was running kind of an alternate pattern. Uh, I love this. Direction. Hey, throw it to the... It's like the schoolyard, <laughs> right? right? Throw it to my left. And then he threads the chalk line as he gets it in for the score. So really a big story in this game is the pressure that the Bengals' defense has exerted upon Kelly 
because uh, it, it has done a lot of things. Number one, it may be a reason why Rob Riddick's in the backfield instead of Greg Bell has really meant that they can't throw the long bombs and really has had a big impact on this game. Well, it has had a big impact. I think the defensive line for the Bengals has been charging, trying to really come with a pass rush. But now there's, you know, the, the, the uh, Buffalo offense has kind of slowed down and they're saying, hey, we're going to stick with what we do the best and we know we can do it, and that's run the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a little more of that here in the beginning of the third quarter. Let's see if we can glean anything from the first half statistics as we take a look. Uh, Bengals, a few more first downs, some more yards rushing, a lot more yards passing. 109 to 42 total yards. Look at that. 197 for Cincinnati to just 94 for Buffalo. Kind of lopsided there in Bengals to half. But you know, they came off a week last, last against Kansas City that they did not look real well. And now they're looking like a championship quality team the kind of team that the, that the Cincinnati fans had expected to see this see this year all right you're a guy who spent so many years in the locker room Buffalo obviously has to make some kind of adjustment here they actually sit around all as a team and say okay here are the adjustments or do you, do you talk by units how does that work in the locker room basically you, the offense sits on one end the defense on the other on the offense side is saying here's what's working here's what not here's what we got to do to do it right but the biggest thing they've got to do is say hey let's don't panic let's go get scared let's don't go in the tank Let's just keep playing hard football, the kind of football that we know that we're capable of playing. Buffalo will get the ball first, as you see Jim Kelly. Let's see statistically how he has stacked up. And uh, Esiason, uh, as we've noted with the edge, and one interception thrown by each. And again, I mentioned in the first half, uh, trivia fans will say years from now, who is the first NFL player to intercept the pass against Kelly? And the answer is sports fans. Right, Leo Barker of the Cincinnati Bengals. So, Esiason with the edge. Kelly will get the ball first. It is 21-9 to Cincinnati as we start the second half. Jim Breach teeing it up. And he will kick it away for Rob Riddick and Walter Broughton. First drive becomes very important for the Buffalo Bills. They hope to break this long drought road game. They've lost 17 in a row. Here's Rob Riddick. Looking for running room, and John Simmons shows them the way at the 10-yard line. Fine special team tackle turned in by Simmons. A lot of times you can look at the opening kickoff in any situation. It kind of sets the tempo. That time Cincinnati came down with full of gusto. They're saying, we're going to win this ball game. What's John Simmons right here? Plays off the blocker, and then bang. That's a pretty play. Simmons, a cornerback behind Lewis Breeden, and shows his value there. So they'll start at the 11-yard line. Kelly just 6 of 13 for 53 yards. And now Greg Bell does start the second half. Can you imagine an entire half? He didn't have a single carry. He was out a good part of the time. Andre Reed in motion. Kelly throwing on first down, completing to Bell. Bell finally touches the ball. And quickly puts him out there first down with David Fulcher, the rookie cover. Well, it looks like a little different strategy now. You know, they've taken out the other halfback because I think what they were doing with Riddick is he could might pick up the blitz a little better. Uh -huh. But now with Greg Bell in there, he's the better receiver. So maybe they're going to look at using the halfback a little more in the pattern. A gain of 11 yards, John, out to the 22. Buffalo with a first down quickly. And they will rehuddle. Just a gorgeous day for football. Temperature up close to 80. Shirt sleeve crowd. Virtual sellout, but not in time to lift the local blackout. Sam Weiss having a little meeting with the officials. I don't know what the question is, but he's not. Doesn't look to be like he's real happy with him. Maybe we can find out from the sidelines what this is all about. Pointing to his ear, it sounds like he may not have sound on his headset. Getting down from the press box, and he's one of the. If my headsets don't work now, why don't you go over and tell them to Hank Bullard turn his headsets off either? You know, that's a little unfair. He can hear and I can't. Good passion on a referee today. And I think you're right, John. I see one of the officials talking to a Bengals assistant about his headset, so maybe you pick that one up. In any event, it's a first down as we start the third quarter. Cincinnati in the lead. Kelly with a first down of his 22. Pitch back to Bell. His first carry. 
Here he goes. Busts across the 40, the 50. Greg Bell all the way. And oh, no, the ball. But he's ruled down. It's ruled down. This is not a recovery. What a run by Greg Bell. 42 yards. And nearly lost it. Let's take a look at this replay. This is the same play that Riddick scored on earlier in the game. As you can see, 42. Ricky Moore makes the block. And Bell cuts it back to the inside. It's the very same play they scored on in the first uh, or the second quarter. Play. It was close. Down to the 36. I wonder if the replay official is taking a look at this one. It's kind of bobbling there. No, he's got control of it. Yeah, but there, the ball oh, pops loose. Right. That's a fumble. Yes, it is a fumble. And the replay official did nothing. And the play is underway, so that's dead. Moore knocked out of bounds to 30. John, bad call. It was a bad call. That's the kind of call that could have been overturned by the replay official. They have to have... They have to be totally 100% sure to make that call, and apparently the replay official wasn't 100% sure. As you can see, there's the, all those defense backs are coming up behind and stripping and pulling the arm loose, and the ball was definitely bobbling in his arms before it went down. Wow. Buffalo awfully lucky, because in this 1986 era of replay, that could have been ruled a Cincinnati recovery very easily. Second and three at the 29. Ricky Moore just kind of a plow horse in there. They're just still making those linebackers be assured that, hey, we will test the middle. And then besides that, it was third and short. That's the time that you can go in and, and, and take advantage of our second and short. You can take advantage of that and let people start thinking of your capabilities, what you can do. This is third and a long one. All just about at the 27. Wow, it was Buffalo lucky there. And he calls timeout. Didn't like something he saw. So the Bills take time to think it over. We'll be right back. Mercedes-Benz was building sports sedans before there was such a term as sports sedan. Experience pays. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class. The heart of a sports sedan. The soul of a Mercedes-Benz. The 190 class. Something more than a sports sedan. Nothing less than a Mercedes-Benz. Hey, Pete. Going to town with us? Ah, go on ahead. But you had a little trouble. Ah, oh, we can take care of it. A day off is something real special. But so's a good neighbor. Going into town with us, Pete. Bush. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream for a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. At New Center 2, no. we believe some of the most important stories are the ones it some is. people don't want us to cover. They're the ones you have to work harder to get. So when someone gets those stories as often as New Center 2's Tony Farina, it's why we call him the newsbreaker. Sure, you take some risks when you expose things that are wrong. I think there's a greater risk in allowing them to go unreported. When news breaks in Buffalo, newsbreaker Tony Farina is the first to know. And when you watch News Center 2, you'll be the next. News Center 2, working harder to be Buffalo's best. Today's game is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By Ramada. Next time, get the all-star treatment from your hotel. Next time, Ramada. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste. Butcher, you know, on the sideline while we were away, they were kind of looking at something. I couldn't tell what it was. It looked like it might be hurt a little bit. Third and one at the 27 for the Bills. Greg Bell, I believe he has it before he was pushed back. 
So Bell getting the call at halfback here in the second half after he was benched in favor of Rod Riddick. And uh, Bell's a fellow who rushed for over 1,000 yards two years ago, over 800 yards last year. I wonder how he must have felt sitting out the majority of that first half. Well, uh, you know, I think you sit back there and you want to get in the game. You want to show the folks and yourself and everybody else what you can do. But at the same time, you don't want to be selfish to the point to where you jeopardize the team just for your own personal interest. Ooh, look at this. Just oh, a man. couple of inches shy, and I think you have to go for it, don't you? I think I would. I'd, I'd like to see them lean that thing the other way, see if it would be first down in it. You know, a lot of that depends on which way the official leans that post. <laughs> Bullis says go for it. Well, he, the very bottom is the, just the point. So okay. even if the post is pointing up top, the point on the bottom is the spot. What he needs to get a carpenter's level and stick it to the pole and make sure it's level so that he knows whether or not it's the first down or not. Uh, oh, you West farmers know all the details. <laughs> Fourth and inches. Crowd coming alive. Straight ahead with the dive for the first down is Ricky Moore. So I'd like to remind our viewers, at the end of the game, we will be selecting the Budweiser Most Valuable Player. Who has the inside track right now, would you say? Gosh, I don't know. Kennebrew looked real good for Cincinnati opening, then they kind of mixed it up. Then Raddick, the first uh, half, you know, with Fubble, and now all of a sudden Greg Bell's come in, and he's taking his place. I tell you, it's a, a lot of good players are playing today. Not to mention Eddie Brown, two touchdown receptions. That's true. Let's take a quick look at the 10-minute ticker before the, well, maybe we won't have a shot before the next play comes off. The Raiders have taken the lead on Washington. And I can't believe it's 3-0 Philadelphia over Chicago. It's a wild one. All right, first down. At the 24. Kelly to throw. A lot of time this time. And Metzelars has turned into Kelly's favorite receiver, hasn't he? Inside the 20 to the 18. And he drew double coverage to boot. That was a... That was a great throw by Kelly, but he had the protection. Uh, that time, Reggie Williams, number 57, came in from the right side of your screen. They doubled up on Browner. And then Reggie came in, knocked the, uh, Greg Bell down, couldn't get in the pattern. But there was 88 Messelars who made the big play. One of the Bengals is down, and undoubtedly he was one of the ones you see in the picture now. So while they tend to an injured Bengal, we will take a timeout in Cincinnati. The Bengals lead it 21 to 9. Eight long years of development have created the Mercedes-Benz 300E. It moves from 0 to 55 in a stunning 7.5 seconds. It moves performance sedan engineering into a new dimension. And it returns to 0 with computerized ABS anti-lock brakes. The 300E sedan. If your home was destroyed, would your insurance pay to completely rebuild it? Fact is, even with an inflation clause, your policy may not cover today's higher rebuilding costs. Leave it to the good hands, people. Allstate can make sure you're protected. With an Allstate home replacement cost guarantee, we'll pay to completely rebuild your home, no matter what the cost. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Ramada wants to know what makes John Madden mad. Try to get some special treatment in a hotel. You show them your gold card, your silver card, every precious metal card in the book. And they still treat you like a nobody. But don't get mad. Just get yourself a free Ramada business card. One little red card, get your preferred room rate, express check-in and check-out, and more. With treatment like that, why carry anything else? Yeah. Next time, Ramada. Call 1-800-2-RAMADA. An American tradition continues. 1975 brought one of the most memorable moments in World Series history. Carlton Fisk's game-winning homer sent Fenway Park into a frenzy. Next Saturday, the Red Sox road to the pennant travels through Toronto as they face the Blue Jays, plus regional action. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting. The injured bingo was number 53, Leo Baker, and you can see coming in from the bottom of your screen here the way he got hurt. He hit with the side of his head, and it looked like he either knocked himself out because he hit the turf hard. Second and four now at the 18. He's replaced by top draft choice Joe Kelly. Bell. Hilcher missed the tackle. And Tim Crumry was over there at the bottom. So Joe Kelly's an interesting story. First round draft choice out of Washington. Didn't get any playing time at linebacker last week as he was a late signee. He was a out here in Cincinnati. Finally, there's Kelly. He's not the only Jay Kelly in the league. 
<laughs> no, but uh, I think Sam Weiss thinks he's his Kelly because he told me the other day that uh, he feels like he could be the key to the building of, of Bengals' uh, future defense because he's got the speed that it takes to play that position. Bills, another important third down. They're just one of six third down conversions. It's 32 from the 16. He can get to the 14 for a first down. Read in motion. Here they come. They got him again. Williams and Carl Zander. Zander doing some jawing at Kelly. And Brown, and Brown level will look at Carl Zander, number 91, come in. He kind of dropped off showing that he was going to go into coverage. But then when the guard went to pick up his dual responsibility, he shot in there and really gave a shot. Boy, that was a, that was a load that Jim Kelly yeah, took that time. Xander started saying a few things to him afterwards. I, I, I never really liked that kind of thing in football. He's well, he's not content. yelling at a guy when he's down. I mean. <laughs> Defensive guys got to pep themselves up, you know. So Scott Norwood with John Kidd holding will attempt a 43-yard field goal. enough legs yes. barely <laughs> he kicked it 44 yards a 43 yard field goal for scott norwood aided by a non-call from the replay official cincinnati still leads it but now by nine it is an automotive advance whose time has come the mercedes-benz supplemental restraint system srs in a severe frontal impact, a driver's side airbag and emergency tensioning retractors in both front seatbelts supplement three-point seatbelt restraint, all in a fraction of a second. SRS, only from Mercedes-Benz. And now standard equipment on every Mercedes-Benz for 1986. Aha. There's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you bland on your fuel bill. Oof. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of pink insulation you can add. It can help you save money on your fuel bill. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning. We put your house in the pink. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Dolphins battle the Jets. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. And uh, Kelly on the phone with his broker. Uh, they exercised ball control that time, John. I mean, they did hang, the, hang on to the ball for over five minutes to start off the uh, third quarter. They did. The one problem they had is they didn't get seven. They're still having to settle for three while mm -hmm. Cincinnati's given seven. Yeah. And that four-point spread, that makes a difference by the end of the game. And this will be an important drive for Cincinnati, their first possession of the third quarter. They have the nine-point lead, a chance to blow it open to 16 as Norwood gets ready to kick it away. Run it, Mike! And Mike Martin back at his four. And Martin dragged down at the 23. Now, let's pause briefly for stakes identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WGRZ TV 2 Buffalo. So, back in Cincinnati, Len Berman with John Hanna. We have 9.34 remaining third quarter. Cincinnati continues to lead Buffalo 21 12, but now Esiason and company notice no huddle. They ran in from the sideline and went right to work. Why need to huddle if they've been off the field thinking about things? James Brooks to carry. And he rushes for a couple to the 25. And Guy Fraser making the stop. And time once again to check out the scores. As we have a whistle on the field and perhaps an injured player. So Sam White's running out there. The Raiders lead by three. Giants by three. And Philadelphia still leads by three.
Looks like Anthony Munoz, it is. Mm. No wonder Whites ran out at a sprint. Oh, man, I would, too. He had a great block that time on Bruce Smith. They both just sat there, and it was just like two big bulls butting heads together. Must, somebody must have rolled up on the back of his legs. Mm. You know, his knees already look like he got in a fight with a knife fight with a midget and lost. Mm. So, so, you know, he's... Mm. Seventh year out of USC. You know, he's got the five straight Pro Bowls. Anthony Munoz, the, the anchor of this huge, fine Cincinnati line. You just hate to think that uh, he is hurt. And while he has tended to, Dallas uh, now leading 17-0. And Houston, after scoring the early touchdown, they've been shut out by the dog defense of Cleveland. It's now 7-6 Houston in the third. Atlanta St. Louis has tightened up, and Green Bay taking... Second straight pounding last week from Houston, this week from New Orleans. They will be a 500 club, the Saints will be. Of course, the only NFL club never to finish above 500. And be sure to join us a week from today. More exciting NFL action. Your day gets underway at 12.30. NFL 86, and then here's the lineup. Miami at Jets. Denver, Philadelphia, interconference game. Seattle against the tough New England Patriots. Pittsburgh and Minnesota, another interconference game. And Houston at Kansas City. And now Munoz is uh, walking off okay in a big sigh of relief. Well, I'd say that is a relief for the Cincinnati because he's not only a great player, but he's a great leader. You know, I used to go out and uh, you can see the knee braces all over his knees that he's already wearing to protect himself. And, uh, but, you know, I used to look forward when I get the chance to play in Hawaii for the Pro Bowl, Anthony was always there. And I always look forward to playing next to the guy because uh, when you play a guy with him, he makes you look good. Right. You did that to a few tackles in your day as well. Split huddle and second down and seven for Cincinnati at their 26. Long count. Change of formation. Playoff with three seconds to spare. Siasen completes it to Collinsworth. Hit hard on the far side by Charles Rome's near first down. Now, let's go to NFL 86. Bob? All right, Lenny, this is the third quarter at the Meadowlands. Giants leading the Chargers 10-7. Dan Fouts tries to go deep, but the Giants' Mark Collins steps in front of Trumaine Johnson and picks it off. Collins was burned Monday night against the Cowboys in Dallas, but he gets the job done here. Boy, he sure was, and... Uh... Holding Fouts to seven after he scored 50 a week ago. Here it's 21-12, uh, Cincinnati over Buffalo. We have eight and a half minutes remaining, third quarter. And that was marked the first down at the 33. Cincinnati would love nothing more than to grind out a good long drive here. Brooks. And maybe two out to the 35. Number 53, Tony Ferjanic of uh, Buffalo, came in there and really disrupted that play. He took on that lead blocker about a yard deep in their own behind the line of scrimmage. And a hand from the crowd as Munoz trots back on the field. Ferjanic, another Notre Dame alumnus, eighth round draft choice. That was some game yesterday at South Bend. You know, Ferjanic's got the reputation of always being around the ball. He's one of these guys that uh, they're looking to stick with for many more years. He's just a rookie. So Munoz back in action, second and eight at the 35. Sinson again, motioning his people, taking a lot of time. Showing a blitz here. Clock is down to five. Sias is going deep to James Brooks. And had it in his grasp, had a chance for it. Even though Rod Hill was with him step for step, and credit Rod Hill there. He's stepping in at left cornerback after Derek Burrows really struggled with the Jets and Wesley Walker last week, and the job gets done here by Hill against Brooks. You can see Rod Hill does make contact here with Brooks, but the reason there's no penalty there is because both people Ooh. have equal right to the football. Right into his chest. Ooh. And again, uh, no huddle offense from Cincinnati. Third and eight at the 35. Buffalo would love to hold right here, get the ball back. You don't play the call, you don't call a play in the huddle, you call it once you get to the line. That's what's going on right now. It's a 
And it's a formation huddle. And then Buffalo comes up and they'll show one look, and as soon as he calls the play, they'll show another one to make him audible out of it. It's a guessing game out there right now. Using much of the 30-second clock. The clock now down to two. And they're claiming that it was Cincinnati that moved first, but let's see if the official buys it. Ball start. Yeah. Number 64 on the offense. Still third down. Bruce Kazerski playing your old position, left guard. That's a new position for him this year. You know, he's, he's sitting there. He saw, I'm sure he can see that 30-second clock or head of field that was fixing to go. And you know when you got to get that thing off, you start tensing up because you're just getting ready for the play. That's a product of not having a huddle. I, mean, I know it looks interesting to call it this way without the formation. It's also a product of the defense shifting once they make the play call. Three wide receivers on the far side, one on the near side. And the hand end around to McGee. He was one of the three receivers on the far side. Fumbles the ball. Let's see what the ruling is here. Tim McGee was the ball carrier on the reverse. And he's ruled down. So no fumble. So let's judge on this one. With big number 65 turn... Uh... Uh, Daryl Talley 56 around, but then the fumble goes, and now it's everybody's ball on big Dave Remington, who is a load, right. flattened the ball out. We couldn't tell from that replay, unlike the other one of similar nature. Here's Jeff Hayes. Running for the third time. Walter Broughton stands at his 13. Good rush. They didn't get to it. Another good high kick from Hayes. Broughton at the 18. The return is on. Flag is down. Broughton will go all the way, but let's see the penalty flag. Broughton scores it, but will it count? Number 29, Derek Burroughs through the clip, I think. Well, it was a nice effort for the youngster from Jacksonville State, but unfortunately for Bills fans, it will not count. An 83-yard return will be wiped out by yet another costly Buffalo penalty. What's funny, well, what's funny is he didn't have to make that call. He had position on his man, but if the guy his, had his back to him. Now, what he could have done was waited and just kept the position and let the ball carrier run around. Illegal block during the return. Number 29 of the receivers, first down is 10. But again, just maintain that position there on the left side of your screen. That was and it. when he turned to chase the ball carrier, it has been a legal block, no penalty, touchdown. Good pickup, John, on Derek Burrows. He was the man with the push. And as we noted a moment ago, that's why he's not starting at cornerback because of a struggle last week against the Jets. So, instead of a touchdown and a... 21-19 game. They're backed up to their nine-yard line. Quite a difference for Jim Kelly. Dangerous territory to be in. Play action fake. He wants to throw from near his goal. There's a Kelly bomb. Jerry got Butler's it. got it. So Bills fans who have been praying for a bomb have had their prayers answered. Beautiful hookup for the first time to Jerry Butler. Boy, was that picture perfect? And you know what's exciting is we're going to be able to see this a lot more times because this is just his first year. I mean, we got years of this gun. Look at that pass. He backed up to his goal line, so this pass traveled nearly 60 yards in the air. It goes as a 52-yard completion against the veteran Lewis Brayton, a thing of beauty. Buffalo now at the Cincinnati 38. It's a quick turnaround of field position. Wow. We've had up and down the field. We've been marching. A nullified long. penalty, and now back to the nine. Now quickly down to the 38. Here goes Kelly again. First head in motion. Firing a bit wobbly and over, and was there a flag? Yes, there is. He was hit early. Not only was he hit early, but he was clotheslined, which is even worse. And Breeden is awfully slow to get up. Mm. What's... Watch Breeden's arm come across the face of Andre Reed right here. Number 34, Bruce Breeden. Boom. Ooh. You know, you criticized Breeden last week. Number 34 on the defense. First down. I think 
sometimes players get confused between what is tough, hard-nosed football and what is dirty. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been this thing now and it's been popularized about how guys go ahead and, and hurt each other, and that's fun, but it's not. Today's Duracell battery. It lasts up to 30% longer than the ones we made just two years ago. Duracell. No battery lasts longer. Introducing McDonald's NFL Kickoff Payoff. Oh boy, a new game at McDonald's. I'm so excited. How do you play? Collect trading cards of all your favorite NFL stars. I got my card. Is this it? No. Oh, oh, my God. Each card's a winner. Win a McDonald's sandwich, fries, or Coca-Cola. New winners every week! But you got only one week to turn in your winning cards, so hustle! NFL kickoff payoff. Follow me! And I know a shortcut! America rides Monroe. America rides Monroe. On the road, the way to go. America rides Monroe. More people ride Monroe shocks and struts than any other brand. And right now, get up to $20 in rebates. Get $2 back on each Monroe Matic Plus. And $5 back on each Gas Magnum or Gas Matic. They'll give you the best ride ever, guaranteed. On the road, the way to go. America rides Monroe. In North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Then the final critical step, the Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it. How do you feel about spending the night with two handsome young men? I better remember to take my vitamins. Join Bob Hope and his guests when they lampoon the new TV scene Monday. Lewis Breeden on the left, the man who threw the clothesline, was the man who was shaken up. He is now out of the lineup, replaced by Ray Horton. And Buffalo now in business at the 13. So instead of being disheartened by the penalty nullifying the uh, long punt return, Kelly has them moving. The stats are starting to roll up thanks to that 52-yard completion of Jerry Butler. Greg Bell on the reverse, and he dropped it. He got it back. Good bounce to Reed. Andre <laughs> Reed and all of that picked up two yards. Maybe three. Tim Crumry finally on the tackle. But on the reverse, it came to Andre Reed who dropped it and the ball bounced right back into his hands and wound up picking up a few yards. Let's watch Andre Reed isolated here. You know what's funny is the guy got the ball and all the blocks were laid and I think he could have danced in had he not had to wait to pick up the ball. Of course, that is important to carry Willie in the end zone, I think. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He could have run in there with gotten something without gotten touched if he had the fumble, I think. Now to the nine yard line. Second and seven. Pitch back to Bell. Good blocking from Moore. And Bell <laughs> touchdown. And he can credit his fullback for a key block. He ran over number 26 that time. I mean, just ooh. Watch this run. Watch this run. Oh, man. Bobby Kemp, he didn't know what hit him that time. Watch number 28. Watch you come through here and hit this guy. Moore. There Bang. he is. Bang. And then knocks him backwards. <laughs> Bell knocked Kemp backwards for his touchdown run. So suddenly a man who sat out the majority of the first half has six carries for 55 yards and a touchdown. Shades of Jim Taylor. Wow. Ran over Kemp. This extra point attempt can bring them within two. Norwood is perfect. So now, with 4.09 remaining in the third quarter, the Buffalo Bills are suddenly within two points, 21 to 19. If he hadn't missed the extra point earlier, it'd be 21-20. And if you keep going for Buffalo fans, if they got the seven after the big fumble return instead of three, the Bills would be leading in this football game. Yeah, but Lynn, if ifs if, and if, buts I were know, Christmas I... and... <laughs> How's that go? If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. That's good. All right. Let's watch Greg Bell again. I mean, you know, there's an old story about Jim Taylor that played from Green Bay. He got fined one time because he was running scot-free and Boom. he went out of his way to run wow. over a defensive back. That is an amazing play to knock him backwards. And there is the former Bengal defensive coordinator. 
now the head coach of the Bills rallying his troops. Will this be their first road victory since December of 1983? Hank Buller is fired up. He wants to beat these Bengals as those teams. And Jim Kelly, you know, he, although he hadn't got the stats, I think what's the biggest, his biggest plus is he's not so impressed about what he does as long as the team wins. And a reminder tonight on NBC, the season premiere of Our House. Starring Wilford Brimley in Days of Our Lives, Deidre Hall. Then following the presidential address, it's a movie for the whole family, Dumbo. Followed by TV's bloopers and practical jokes. Big night coming up on NBC. Tim McGee kneels in the end zone. So, the Cincinnati Bengals on the touchback will start at their 20. And the Buffalo Bills have come to play with four minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter. Boy, that shot of Bell running over Kemp. Will we see that on highlight after highlight uh, over the next few days? That was some flick. For the rest of his career, I mean, that's something that uh, he'll go through his life remembering that lick. Those, those are far and few between. So, Sam White's now feeling pressure. First down at the 20. And back to the first quarter sprint, which was Kinnebrew. And Drew hits it out to two, maybe three, before Martin Bayless could make the tackle. The hole opened up pretty quick there, but uh, he didn't find it quick enough to pop through and get into the secondary. So, you know, it only wound up being a two-yard game where really it should have might have been a three or a four or maybe a five-yarder. Most of the yards the Kennebrew rushed was on that first series. Broke one for 22. They need to get the offense going here. They're within two. They get, need to get that nine-point spread back in this ball game to feel a little more at ease. Second and eight at the 22 for Cincinnati. First down at the 31, perhaps the 32. So the last resort was Brooks, and he made the play for first down yardage. The coverage this time for the Buffalo Bills was excellent. They, everybody kind of dropped back and had those zones filled. So that there was no real outlet in there to, that the uh, Sonson could drop off to. So he had to go to the dump off. But with, with uh, James Brooks, number 21, that's a pretty good dump off. That water bug can make some yards. Good block from Eddie Brown to help spring, spring him for the first down. And out to the 31, first down. Play action fake. Bally misses the tackle. And complete to Brown. Out to midfield. A good scrambling play by the Bengals. And another first down. Pickup of 18. Let's, let's watch the secondary here dropping off. Rod Hill got turned that time and was running back in a hurry. As you see, the little zone there at the bottom of your screen is wide open. Finds the seam, and there it comes. You know, sonson has got lots of time back there. He dodges maybe one guy, but then he's got plenty of time to throw the ball. And another snap that this time Esiason falls on. But this has been the bane of the Bengals' existence in 1986. The center snap. You know, I've noticed one thing. This is, you know, as we've seen these fumbles occur, it's always been on the running game. And I think what is happening is the center snapping the ball and charging out to make that block, and the Sison's not riding him up into the line. Uh -huh. you know? So that center, it's a hard thing to do to block somebody with your hand up between your legs. <laughs> I would say. I've never tried it, but I can imagine it's a tough thing. Dave Remington, the center from Nebraska, so this pushes them back into their territory at the 48, second and 12. Wide open, Brooks, and overthrown by Esiason. So, Boomer with that mistake, and this will set up third and long. Boy, they would hate to give up the football here, and a field goal would give Buffalo the lead. Two minutes remaining. Third quarter, and Sam Weiss says, I can't wait for October because in September, now in his third year, he's just won once in nine games, and now he's struggling with a Buffalo team, which historically has had problems on the road. And now this uh, no-huddle formation where they call the play at the line of scrimmage. Last time it resulted in a false start. Watch, watch Buffalo move their defense now. See him moving around? Now he's got to recall the play. Third and 12 at the 48. of running room and this will force a punch and Buffalo wanted a, a fumble call but Esiason short 
That time, number 78, Bruce Smith, came to the other side of the field. He was kind of a, what they call a floater or a mover. And he was all the way there trying to get to Esaias' blind side, which is his right side. The reason that is because he's left-handed and he faces the left side of the uh -huh. field throws, and his back is to the right side of the pass throw. Hey John, I, I kept seeing some shots of Ken Anderson on the sidelines. Uh, any chance that we might see him in action? Well, he said, you know, we went out and, uh, like I said, ate dinner yes or lunch yesterday, and he's ready to play, but uh, he's happy with his consultation mm -hmm. job right now. All right. The rush is on. Hayes gets it away for the far side. Not one of his longer kicks today. And goes out of bounds, and it's marked at the 15. So now, as Kenny Anderson and the rest of the Bengals and their fans ponder this situation, and they saw just a 30-yard punt, now Buffalo with a ball and a chance to take the lead. So, it is time once again for our 10-minute ticker and see what's transpiring around the National Football League. Battle of field goals in Washington. Tough defenses today. The Bears have finally scored, and they lead their game. Two-point game here, two-point game. Cleveland went ahead of Houston. Defense is the name of the game in week number two. And what kind of defense will they get against Kelly? First down at the 16. Wants to throw. And going long, same pattern, Burkett, all and way. he could go all the way. Chris Burkett, touchdown, 84 yards. The Buffalo Bills have taken the lead. <laughs> we talked about this earlier in the game. You know, the Bills, very conservative, boom, boom, four yards, six yards. And we said then they're going to do this until they start getting those defensive backs to play it up and getting tight, and then they're going to come with a bomb. We've just seen two of them in a row right here. Caught the defensive backs, the Bengals, completely off guard. Bills fans asked last week, where were the bombs? They can be found this week in Cincinnati. Kelly to Burkett, 84 yards. Is Kelly dynamic, exciting, or what? He's fun to watch. This is kind of, you know, an offensive lineman just kind of jogs down the field. And he says, well, that was, that was kind of fun. I just walked for about three or four seconds and then watched everybody else work. Wow. And now Scott Norwood will try to tack a point on and try to give Buffalo a five-point lead. And he does it. So, the Buffalo Bills have scored 17 unanswered points in the third quarter, and you hear it from the Cincinnati crowd. Watch this thing of beauty. A little from play Kelly action. to Burkett. A little play action pass, and the burner is going downfield quick. It looks like the defender fell down there. I don't think he could have caught him anyway, do you? <laughs> he was wide open. What a, what a beautifully thrown ball. Here it is from a different angle. You know, now the offensive lineman, he's sitting back there. He sees this. He says, hey, there ain't no way I can get down there. He kind of just jogs down there for the extra point. You know, he says, oh, boy, this is fun. This is football. <laughs> Burkett, second year out of Walter Payton School at Jackson State. And Jim Kelly puts on a show, doesn't he? 26-21. Has 17 points here in the third quarter. Now Kelly's numbers. They weren't too impressive in the first half. He certainly padded the stats here in the second. He's now thrown for over 200 yards. Those last two passes accounted for about 70 or 80 percent of those, I think. That was a, he has thrown a couple of long right. line drives. The 84 yarder represents the first NFL touchdown for Chris Burkett. So, with 54 seconds remaining in a Bills third quarter, the Bengals will try to figure out what's going on. McGee at the one. Across the 20. McGee all the way out to the 41. So if you like a lot of yardage, thanks to a 39-yard return by Tim McGee, this is your kind of ball game. Rodney Bellinger finally made the tackle. Let's, let's pick up this uh, return from McGee. It's pretty. Watch him run here. It's a great return, but I also want you to watch number 36, Rodney Bellinger, right there. He got blocked, and he comes back. And this is something Hank Bowles See him trying to strip the ball there with his right arm, trying to rake it free and cause a fumble. And the Bengals again without a huddle. First down from the 41 for the first time in the game. They trail. It's 26-21 Buffalo. Esiason wants to throw. Outlet to his tight end, Holman. Across midfield and down to the 47. 
Tony Furjanic watching Holman carefully on the play. And a few words between <laughs> Holman and Eugene Marr. I think that time Holman thought he was already out of bounds. That was a little close, you know. It, you know, get the temperament going. He's flying out of there and he's coming down the sideline. All of a sudden, Marv's running. He says, I don't, you know, go ahead and make sure he's out of bounds. So, Holman can gain some yards. He's a big guy and uh, you better make sure he's out when he's out. Well, the official ruled he was inbounds. Pickup of 13. First down at the 46. Kinnebrew. Kinnebrew gets a couple. Crowd uh, not responding favorably to the play selection. Sean McNanny in on the tackle. Defensive line for Buffalo Bills that time came to play. They just stood up with that big massive unit for uh, Cincinnati and just, just held their own, held their ground. Well, there are eight seconds remaining in the third quarter, and let's see if the split huddle will give Cincinnati enough time to get a playoff before the gun. Two seconds, one second. And that's the end of the third quarter. At halftime, it was 21-9 to Cincinnati. On the strength of 17 unanswered points, the Buffalo Bills have shocked the Bengals. It is now 26-21. to Meet the man who's going to defend NBC on Tuesday nights. Next to injustice, I hate losing. <laughs> Hi, I'm George Hamburger, and every Monday and Friday during my morning show on WGR AM 550, I'll be talking to Bill's powerhouse quarterback, Jim Kelly. We'll discuss this past week's game and the Bill's exciting future. Then we'll take your calls. You can ask Jim Kelly himself your questions about the game. That's the Jim Kelly Show, Monday and Friday mornings at 810 on WGR AM 550. Watch Mike Andre and Beverly Armstrong on News Center 2 Weekends. A quarter that is destined to go down in the Buffalo highlight film for 1986. A 43-yard Scott Norwood field goal. A nine-yard Greg Bell, Mack truck kind of run when he ran over Bobby Kemp for a touchdown. And then 84 yards, the bomb. Kelly to Burkett for 17 points. And now... Bengals are faced with a second and seven at the Buffalo 43 as we start the fourth quarter in front of a sellout crowd in Cincinnati. Here comes Smith. He grabs him by the shirt and throws him down for the sack. Oh. Now that's he's ruled in the grasp, so he's down. What a pursuit by Bruce Smith. His second sack of the year. What a play. Again, Bruce Smith, number 78, lined up over on the right side in front of Brian Blados. You see him there coming. Bang. Blados is playing out of position now. You know, he's, he's, he's new, he's fresh. So what they're going to do is take Buffalo's best defensive lineman and put him in front of what they feel is the weakest point in Cincinnati's line. And it's because Brian Blados a brand new world for him over there at the right tackle spot. Well, There's a brand new world for the Bengals facing a very different Bills team. They played the Jets tough only to lose by four. Now they find themselves ahead of the Bengals by five with 14-41. And it's third and 20. The right. offensive lineman know that those, those guys got their ears pinned back in the cone. Right now an offensive lineman, boy, you're tense and tight. And Smith's around on the other side again, so they are flip-flopping him around. Smith coming from the left. Here he comes again. Doesn't get there. Asias and completes it to Holman, but he's short of first down yardage, and now this will be an interesting decision for Sam White. Will he punt it away or go for it on fourth? And uh, it appears that he will punt. So while the punting unit comes on and Jeff Hayes, let us check out the 10-minute ticker. As the Raiders lead Washington, and uh, Philly is now tied Chicago. they got a barn burner going at Soldier Field. They do. And no changes on that panel of scores, except for the score in our game. And Green Bay is within 14 now in New Orleans. So here, Hayes will apparently punt it away. Although he did fake and pass one in the preseason. But it is a punt going to the near side. And they let it go out of bounds around the 15 and it's marked at the 15 so
So a rarity for the Buffalo Bills. They have the ball and the lead. We'll be back. A tip. 26-21. The 26 points for Buffalo represent the most points they have scored in the game in two years. I have a feeling a whole lot of Buffalo records will drop now that the Kelly era is here. Look at these numbers. 11 of 18, 214 yards, one touchdown pass, another long bomb in there as well to Jerry Butler, and the one interception by Leo Barker. You know, the funny thing about the Bills is they've got players on either end of the spectrum. they got 10-year players, and they got one- and two-year players. So they don't have any players that are right in the prime of their career, so all they can do is improve. First down from the 15. Will they be conservative or go for it? Huh? I don't think they'll be maybe a little more conservative. Well, let's see. He does pass. Quick hitter inside to Greg Bell. Picks up a yard or so. And Crumry and Eddie Edwards on the front three for the Bengals combining to stop Bell. Interesting choice of personnel. Now we see Rob Riddick come into the lineup. And Bell heads off as uh, Bell's had the better second half. Obviously, he wasn't in for the first half with Riddick replacing him. Well, apparently, you know, if we, if the strategy and our thinking was right, maybe we'll see the pass now because they think uh, Riddick's better at still ah. picking up the blitz. So if it's Riddick in there, expect them to pass, and if it's Bell, expect them to run. Right. Right. Second and nine at the 16. Riddick is now flanked out as a wide receiver on the near side. And Kelly is looking deep on the side for he Riddick. He He's it. got it. He burned it. And rule. Let's watch Riddick here go right past Fulcher. I don't think Fulcher had the respect for his speed that he ought to have had. And if he could just keep the speed in bounds here. Yeah, excellent oh. call. It's the right call. And he wasn't pushed. I mean, uh, I'll tell you, you have to, uh, you don't take uh, breaks when you're at the stadium when Buffalo's on offense. No, you don't. You Not may anymore. come back and find them on defense. <laughs> a guy named Mr. Kelly back there at the quarterback spot. It's exciting, and you know the sellout crowd here doing parts of Kelly, and that adds more money in the Buffalo Coppers. In the National Football League, they split the money, 60-40, home and away. All right, third and nine for Kelly. Inside handoff to Bell, and they stock that one up. Jim Scow, rookie from Nebraska, third-round choice, and he made a good play. Well, not only did he, but all the other four defensive linemen they had in at that time. There was five down men coming on the rush that time. That was a little of a strange call that they didn't kind of audible out of that and maybe go to a, maybe a quick pass or something along those natures. Well, they thought the trickery might work out, but now John Kidd has to punt from his goal line. And this should give Cincinnati some excellent field position with a full 12 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Mike Martin is back at his 45. On a high snap! Oh, no. And Kidd, he he's out of the end safety. zone. That's a safety. You know, they call John Kidd the disaster quarterback. That's right. Because he's the third-string quarterback. Somebody goes down. Well, that time, it looked like his natural reaction when he missed the snap. As you can see here, he goes way over his head. And he tries to field the ball. And then he goes back to throw it. I think he'd already stepped out of bounds and then finally for the two points. But maybe it's better he didn't throw. And maybe it's better he took the two because if he tried to do anything, Cincinnati would be in perfect position for three or six. It was Dale Hellestray with the high snap from center that went over Kidd's head. And now suddenly the Bengals are within a field goal. You know, Hellestray, is, it, apparently they must be low on snappers because Hellestray does have a sprained wrist. We mm -hmm. knew that, you know, what, about three or four series ago, I believe he got it hurt. And now he's in there snapping. So, you know, it must be bothering him and affecting some uh, to, to have that high snap. So now is the result of the safety. And we've seen a little bit of everything in this game. It will be a free kick for the Bills from their 20s. So now, once again, Cincinnati will have good field position. And if they can drive down for a field goal, we would have a tie football game. The worst part of the safety is not so much that you give up two points, but you give the ball up in pretty good field position. So finally, Cincinnati able to score in the second half on a safety. Their first scoring of this half. Well, the free kick is a punt from Kidd, and it's a beauty. 
Mike Martin back to 16. And Martin gets it out to the 37. So that's where the Bengals will start after a 21-yard return. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Travelers, one of America's strongest, most experienced financial experts. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Aid for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. First down at their 38. The Bengals trailing by three. 11.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Tries to under pressure. Throws. It's out of bounds. And Ted Collinsworth caught it, but he was out. So now the pressure on the Buffalo defense, and they seem to be responding, John. They have shut out the Bengals in the second half. Buffalo has really played excellent football. They've done a lot of different things differently in the second half, especially with number 78, Bruce Smith, flopping from side to side to cause some confusion on the offense line. And then the defensive linebackers are really playing some aggressive football right now. They're really, they're really attacking the Bengals. Bengals have had the ball three times in the second half, and they've had to punt all three. The Bills had the ball four times. They always score, except the fourth time was a Buffalo score. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a safety for Cincinnati. So second and ten at the 38. Four wide receivers, and Esiason on his own quarterback draw is dragged down by Fred Smurlis. And there's an old friend of yours who we haven't had much of a chance to talk about today. <laughs> Fred Smurlis is a, a hustler from the word go, but it's real funny when you're an offensive lineman, he starts a pass rush in front of you. It looks like he goes into some sort of a seizure or something. He just shakes <laughs> all over, and then he finally makes his move. And we should note that Jim Haslett, another fellow you played against all these years when you were with the Patriots, uh, out with a broken leg, he used to say the only way to stop John Hanna was to shoot him. Well, you had <laughs> you had that Bermuda Triangle, if you remember that. You had Shane Nelson at one linebacker, Jim Haslett another, and then Fred Smurlis. Siasen takes a timeout. The crowd isn't happy about, but we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Bottom score, Buddy Ryan against his old team, 10-10 in the fourth quarter. Here, an important third down and four at the 44 for Boomer, Siasen, and the Bengals. They trail by three, but a full 11 minutes remaining in a football game which has seen just a little bit of everything. you scored in every way you can score in football. A missed extra point. Big fumble recovery turnover, a couple of Kelly bombs, a safety, a couple of field goals. The Sonson right now is, he's thinking about this down. He knows how important it is. You know, there's 11 minutes left, which is a lot of time in professional football. But still, he needs to get this offense rolling and getting the tempo that he had back when he started this game in the first quarter. Dallas was the only laugher today. Third down and four. James Brooks in motion. And the big play is complete to Brooks for the first down, and the Bengals keep the ball, getting into Buffalo territory at the 49. Charles Rome is covering Brooks. James Brooks is one of the most versatile players on the Bengals offense. He's played wide receiver. He's played uh, split. He's played running back. You, call, you name what you want him to do, and he'll do it for you. He's just, he's just a very versatile player about the tough situation for Cincinnati. They lost their opener in trouble here. A short week to play Cleveland Thursday, and then they come home to host the Bears. <laughs> Not September's to remember for the Bengals. Brooks. And James Brooks dragged down at the 45 after a gain of four. So, let's take a break and check in with NFL 86. Len, with just over six minutes to play in the game, the Redskins now lead the Raiders 10-6. Why? First of all, Jay Schrader, 59 yards to Clint Didier. He's hauled down by Mike Haynes, but that sets up first and goal. And moments later, George Rogers got the go-ahead touchdown. 10-6 skins. Lenny? Thank you, Bob. And that would, uh, boy, that would put Washington up 2-0, and, oh, and the Raiders would start off with a couple of losses. So, strange football season developing here. Here we go. Here at second and six at the 45. Buffalo at the 35. Charles Rome's on the fumble recovery. The Buffalo Bills in business at their own 40 with the lead. We have a little uh, free for all down there. Looks like there's a little. Uh... Kinnebrew, the last man to get up. They had gathered around him, but Kinnebrew coughed it up. 
Charles Rhodes recovery. Here comes Hank Bullard, the head coach. Getting his guys off the field. Say, hey, they, they have the lead on the road. You don't need any of this kind of business. All right, let's don't get a penalty here. Let's watch Kennedy right here with the fumble. He sees a good hole and he runs to it. But again, Buffalo not going so much for the tackle, but trying to strip that ball loose. And that's what Hank Bullock wanting. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And for the second week in a row, Cincinnati has three turnovers. Two fumbles, interception. They had three last week in Kansas City. First down for Buffalo at the 40. Kelly pitch back to Bell. Bell perhaps loses a yard. Tackled by Eddie Edwards. And now we are getting down to crunch time. Inside of 10 minutes remaining. An important drive for the Buffalo Bills as they try to win on the road for the first time in nearly three years. That's time Ricky Moore tried to throw a little bit of a block on uh, Reggie Williams, number 57, but I would say, I would call it more or less a little bit of a block. Kind of just threw his body into him and really just didn't put his head in the numbers like he should have. Buller urging the troops on. Second down and closer to 11 yards, back at the 41. Bell, daylight, midfield, Greg Bell! <laughs> And Bell across the 30 to the 28. A big play for Buffalo, 32 yards, and it was a running play. The Buffalo Bills have brought out the Bluebirds here in Cincinnati. They're on fire. Greg Bell, that time, as you will see here, broke out to his left, but he cut back behind the block of Crumry. Watch him. Crumry always pursues. Crumry did. He cuts back behind his block. Now watch him dance. That's a running back. Love to watch those guys perform. And Kemp is the one who we ran over for the touchdown earlier and just kind of watched him to the ground that time. Buffalo now with the Cincinnati 28. First down. Again, the pitch back. This time Rob Riddick with the 25. Riddick across the 20. Big holes opening up for the Bengal defense. All the way down to the 13. Another Buffalo first down. Riddick did a great job that time. It looked like he was going to take it outside, but he followed the block of number 51. We can see 51 on the left side there, pulling up into the hole. He sees it, and it cuts back up underneath on the block of number 51 there. Good game. And they are in scoring position now on the 17-yard line. Ripping it open. Sam White must be desperately concerned. 32 yards for Bell, 15 for Riddick. First down at the 13. Bell straight ahead inside the five. David Fulcher finally grabbed him. Big hole there, right, right over the side that we've been talking about, Ross Browner. They're, they're attacking the guy, and they're going to say, we're going to make you play football. Everybody knows Ross Browner can rush the passer, but they want to make sure he can run against pass. Watch him there on the left side. They bang Ross, Ross Browner, pull him back. He gets an arm, but an arm just doesn't do it with Greg Bill. you got to put your whole heart and soul into it as well as body. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Second and two from the five. Bell, close to close. the goal line, but not over, but it will be enough for a first down. You know, all those fans watching in upstate New York have watched the Bills faithfully on NBC the last three years. They have watched 17 consecutive road defeats. And finally, with seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, on the second Sunday of the Kelly era, the long drought may be about to end, and thanks to some good running here by Bell. Oh, and the blocking, too. The hole opened up, and he hit that hole and accelerated through. One more step, and they wouldn't have had to run this extra play. Kelly either has an entire drive of runs or an entire drive of passes. This one's totally on the ground. He licks his fingers as he faces first and goal at the one. Ricky Moore. Oh, lost it. Touchdown. <laughs> Went to Metzelars. When things go right, they go right. That ball popped up in the air, and Pete Nesquart just sitting there. It came down in his hands. He couldn't do anything to catch it. Oh, man. The Bengals are saying, where have we seen this before? Last week, the exact same thing happened against Cincinnati. Kansas City fumbled it to themselves at the goal line for a touchdown. Here, Moore is hit by Reggie Williams. It pops up. Metzelars is sitting there, gathers it in for six. A lot of odd things, a lot of odd things. That's one more that we can add to our repertoire today that we've seen, right? Just amazing. The second consecutive week, that play against the Bengals. What are the odds of that? And now, Scott Norwood can make it a 10-point Buffalo lead. 
and he does it. The Bills have outscored the Bengals 24 to 2 in the second half with 6.27 remaining. It comes right to Metzelars, the Bills by 10. Labor. Did you send those galoshes to Cleveland? They didn't get there. Yes, Mr. Reliable. Air Express, as per your instructions. Which company did you use? Why? Aren't they all the same? Hold it. If you'd used Federal Express, you wouldn't be having this problem. Come with me. You see, Federal Express isn't the same as everybody else because today it takes much more. For instance, we have computers in our vans. Oh! So Kelly has led them to 33 points, the most since 1983 against the Dolphins. It is a 10-point lead, 33-23. His numbers are only part of the story. A terrific ground game has really helped the Bills forge this 10-point lead. The kickoff comes down to Tim McGee at the 7th. McGee across the 20. McGee all the way up to the 40. Now, we've mentioned 17 consecutive road losses for the Buffalo Bills. Let us take you back to December of 1983, the date December 4th, in Kansas City. Bill Kenny, the quarterback for the Chiefs. And Bills fans, remember the name Mike Kennedy? Well, here he is, Kennedy with the interception. On he went for the touchdown. Buffalo won that day in Kansas City, 14-9. They have not won on the road since. Perhaps, thank Bullock, we'll see that streak end here. First down. The Collinsworth wide open. Don't pop the champagne course yet. Collinsworth to the 34 with six minutes to go. A 24-yard pickup. Plenty of time given to Osiris in that time. And when you give him that much time, you can't stop him. Giants now with a 10-point lead over San Diego. First down at the 34. Bengals trailing by 10 points. Osiris over the middle. Brown and nearly intercepted by Bayless on the tip. And that'll set, down, set up second down as it was intended for Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown coming off the field now. It looks like he might have hurt his uh, left hand. He's, he's kind of holding it gingerly right there. If he goes out, that could uh, slow him down a little bit because he's the speed man on the other side. He's the deep guy. Oh, look what Dallas is doing to Detroit. Houston has regained the lead over Cleveland. Atlanta's doubled up St. Louis to score. Buffalo plays St. Louis next week at home. How about these stats for Greg Bell in the second half? He's rushed for 96 yards. No yards in the first half. Second and 10 for Cincinnati at the 34. Bruce Smith is lined up on the other side of the line. Matthiasen to James Brooks incomplete. Third down and 10 at the 34. Bayless on the coverage of Brooks. Now five and a half minutes remain in the fourth quarter. Bruce Smith has not had the success in front of uh, <laughs> Big Anthony Munoz today that he'd hoped he would have. And uh, so now he's going to kind of go to the other side and right. see if he can kind of Move get back ahead. and look at the quarterback's face. Now Brooks and Holman head out. Stanford Jennings, Bill Johnson, Eric Caddis in the lineup for Cincinnati. Talk about important plays. I'd say this one ranks right up with them. Oh, third and ten. Critical point in this game. 34. Plenty of time for Collinsworth out of bounds. It'll be fourth down and ten. And now he virtually has to go for it because a field goal from this position would be a 51-yard attempt. And I, well, Anderson's coming on the field with breach, so they will try a long field goal attempt. There's still lots of time here. You can get a field goal if the defense comes through and stops to get the ball back. You get a touchdown, you tie it up. In the NFL, you have uh, overtime. So that, then they go to overtime and whoever flips the coin first. Well, if they indeed carry through with the field goal attempt, remember Ken Anderson, the quarterback, is holding. This will be a 52-yard attempt for Jim Breach. He's got it. Breach jumps in the air. A 
52-yard field goal. The Bengals are within seven. Can you imagine the pressure that Mr. Breach feels when he's out there on the field as a kicker? I mean, he's sitting on the sidelines drinking ice water all day. Then all of a sudden, he comes out there and he goes, if I don't kick this, there's no way we'll win this game. I mean, you've got that's tremendous pressure. I would jump up and down soon when if I made a field goal in that situation. <laughs> It's officially marked as a 51-yard field goal. It's nearly 52. I, I could hear a sigh of relief from up here. It was kind of, oh. Well, <laughs> that's the first point the offense has been able to put on the board in the second half. They've only scored five points in the second two quarters, one on a safety, and now a 51-yard field goal. So that high-powered Cincinnati offense that everybody talks about so much has been basically shut down for the second week in a row. No points in the third quarter. Five points here in the fourth. But the important story is they are within seven and a chance to force overtime if they can get a good surge here from their defense. Five minutes and 19 seconds remain in the fourth quarter. And Cincinnati will kick off. Keep it on the ground and eat up as much time. And you never know with him. He may just turn it around and go bombs away again. Just what you think you expect from him. He turns it around. Rob Riddick at the two. Good pursuit. Riddick nailed at the 12. The crowd comes alive for the special teams. Just an 11-yard return. And now the focus and the binoculars will be on the defense. That was great play that time by the Cincinnati Special Teams and the fact that you can stop a return team inside your 20. It's like putting a gold star in your pocket. As we see Mr. Jim Kelly come out to lead his bills. We'll see what kind of offense they do have. But it'll be interesting to see whether Coach Bull decides that he wants to be a little more conservative or whether he's willing to bet his marbles with Jim Kelly throwing another bomb. Buffalo leads by seven. They got the ball at their own 14. A sellout crowd. The noisiest they have been. They are crying for defense. A handoff to Bell. No gain. A flag is thrown in on the play. I think there might have been a face mask against uh, Emmanuel King that time. He kind of just reached in to make the tackle and grabbed anything he could. And unfortunately, the only thing he got was face mask. Here we see it. There's uh, Ricky Moore, but you top of your screen, you see number 28, Greg Bell, and you'll see Emmanuel playing off the block and just reaching to grab anything he can. He doesn't know what he's getting, but all he gets is face Face mask, number 90 on the defense, five yards, and it'll still be first down. Good pictures on that play, supplied by producer Steve Danz and our director, Jim Cross. The Cincinnati offense huddling. They dearly want the ball back to try to force overtime. Five minutes remain in regulation. I, I guarantee you there's some deep-seated feelings down there on the bench right now with Sam Weiss. He's, uh, he's telling them what's, what's going on, what's happening, what are they doing in this, what are they doing there. And they're going through the game plan. This play exactly is going to work. Crowd becomes nearly deafening. It's a first and five for Buffalo at the 19. 4.45 remaining. It's back to Bell. Stopped at the 15, and on Bengals are saying fumble. The officials have not indicated such. Let's see if we can pick it up from the replay. A second Here's down, Buffalo ball. Let's see if we can pick it up, John. Was he looking to pass or cut it back? I, I he was looking sure about to that cut play. back, and, and he just fell, and the ball was on the ground. Well, his arm touched the ground first. You wonder if uh, that's a fumble or not. Nobody had touched him, though, so the ball was still alive. No overturn from the replay official. Second and nine. Kelly to throw. Complete to Andre Reed. His first completion today. A big pickup for a first down and an important time for Jim Kelly. Ball control and Jim Kelly paid the price. He was willing to wait that extra little second to make this ball complete. As you can see, he does get hit right here by Ross Banner, 79, and Tim Crumra, number 69. A big 19-yard pickup to Andre Reed. 
yards credit. And now Buffalo trying to do to Cincinnati what the Jets did to Buffalo last week. Trying to run the clock out on them without giving them another chance to come back. Bengals want the ball trailing by seven, but it's first down. Buffalo at the 34. Ricky Moore. A couple of yards, but the clock will continue to run inside of four minutes now. I'm anxious to see what they do. They, they do have Cincinnati's defense playing close now. It's number 33, David Fulcher, was up on the line of scrimmage lap, that time. Now, they've been pretty conservative and eating up the clock. It wouldn't surprise me too much to see Jim Kelly go for a little, maybe uh, a post pattern down the sidelines or something. This is a second and seven at the 37. And they fumbled a snap. But Bell and Kelly got together to fall on it, but it'll be a loss of three and set up third and ten. Now let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WGRZ TV 2 Buffalo. In Cincinnati, Len Berman along with John Hanna. Three minutes and three seconds remaining. Buffalo on the verge of an upset of Cincinnati, 33-26. But they must hold on to the ball now. Third and ten at their 34. Kelly fighting this crowd. Here they come. Dumps it off to Greg Bell. Bell stopped way short of a first down. A Bengals defense hold. Big, big series of downs for the Bengals defense. Always been the line the last two years they came through on this series. Now we've got to find out if the Bengal offense going to respond. Are they going to do the things that they need to do? Are they going to come back and score the, the points? The defense has set it up for them. They took the risk. They went. They got the, the long field goal for 53 yards. Now then, it's up to the offense. They've got to get back down. They can't settle for three this time. They've got to have seven. A lot of pressure on John Kidd. He's walking out there, and he knows he needs to get a big one, a big one off. Well, they have to worry about the snap first. Well, that's true, because he did get one over his head last time. Well, to set the clock and score, it's 2.28 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Bengals have been limited to five points in the second half after scoring 21 in the first half. Cincinnati trailing by seven. As they get the ball back, that missed extra point looms just a little bit larger from Scott Norwood. It would have been an eight-point lead at this point. And, and really no real, a lot of, you know, there's always some concern, but not really as concerned as Buffalo is right now because there's a possibility of tying this up in one strike instead of making them get the ball twice. If they had the one point, right. Buffalo could sit on the ball and eat the clock out even if Cincinnati does score with this guy. John Kidd pondering the situation at the 15. Now there'll be a different long snapper in there. It won't be hella straight this time. It'll be Kent Cole. Good snap. And a good kick. Martin waiting for a fair catch at the 25. So, Cincinnati, after a 46-yard punt, they have just one timeout remaining. Two minutes and 19 seconds left, and the Bengals now will start at their 26. They need the end zone. A field goal on this possession will do them no good. second half, Cincinnati has garnered just 42 yards rushing, 98 passing. A total offense of 140 yards, but has resulted in just five points. Sam Weish, I'm, he's going through a lot of plays in his mind right now, a lot of defense. There's a lot of pressure on that man, too, because he knows 
you know, this this the one and eight in December uh, September is not a good record for him to carry with him. Second and ten at the 26. Pressure on Asias gets away once, just heaves it downfield for Collinsworth, who's got it. Back. What a fun time in Cincinnati. The Bengals trailing by seven or at the two-minute warning. They have now driven down to the 28-yard line on the strength of a 42-yard pass play from Asias into Collinsworth. And Boomer took a shot on that play. I thought he was just throwing the ball and heaving it up for grabs, it looked like. It looked like it's me because he is running everywhere. He's under heavy pressure by the Buffalo Bills. And the last minute, he just kind of thumbs it out there. Mm. And there's Collinsworth, old reliable. He's got it for 42 yards. Boomer came off holding his side for a moment. Ken Anderson put his helmet on. I thought Anderson was going in for him. It looks like Esiason will come back in. And what a big play, a big time for the Bengals. It couldn't happen at a more crucial time, Lamb, because this is the game. This is the game right here. And, uh, you know, they've had two well-fought teams here. These both teams have been crushing each other. And now it boils down to the last two minutes. They have one timeout remaining. 28 yards of real estate to engineer. They trail by seven. Here we go, the shotgun, the fake to Brown. Boot leg the other way, Asiasen. First down, Bengals. That's a good call. That is a good call. We've seen that play disguised basically the same action by the offensive line three three different ways. You see the offensive lineman pulling to the right. We've seen them hand it off to Brooks and run the play. We've seen them do that and, and throw a play action pass. Now we've seen a size and bootleg it. Same look, three different plays. If you're just joining us, a minute 53 to go. That's the timeout situation. Cincinnati with the ball at the Buffalo 16. A touchdown here in the extra point would tie it at 33. Mm. Four wide receivers in the lineup. Got it. No. Oh, it was in his hands. Eddie Brown. Esiason somehow escaped the sack. It hit Brown right in the chest. He could not hang on at the one. Steve Freeman covering. Oof. To see such a remarkable escape by, by Boomer Esiason, number seven. Watch him here. He just gets clobbered. He stands up and throws the ball. Right in the numbers. Mm. Sometimes that's the hardest place to catch it, though. Mm. We've seen some drops today. Second and ten at the 16. Intended for Brooks, wasn't looking for it. Brooks was claiming he was held up, and there is a flag on the far side with Martin Bayless covering. And we'll see if Brooks is correct in his initial assessment. Penalty being called against Buffalo. <laughs> and Washington beats the Raiders. Raiders are 0-2. The Giants have defeated San Diego. Philadelphia and Chicago tied in the fourth. This will be second down and five at the 11. We have a minute 41 remaining. Hank being a defensive coach, boy, I know he's turning because this game is on the defensive shoulders right now. down to the seven. But the clock continues to run, and this will set up third down. Bruce Smith in on the tackle. A minute 26 to go. Dallas beat Detroit big. Cleveland leading Houston now. Big fourth quarter for Cleveland. Third down and two. 
Well, you know they're going for it on fourth down. Oh, yeah. Bias into the throw. The Caddis. First down and more. They're down to the two. Inside of a minute now. Eric Caddis, the rookie from Michigan. And now the Weeby offense, John. That's right, the Weeby offense. Diala's in there this time at fullback. That's an extra name they've got now in their Weeby uh, offense. But they call it the Weeby offense. So cause when all those big guys get in, Weeby going to score now. Weeby this close. Weeby going to score. The Weeby offense. First and goal at the two. 30 seconds to go. Up. Asias had kept it. The touchdown. What a fake. Asias and ran it in. He faked out everybody. <laughs> so the Bengals, who scored with 22 seconds remaining in the second quarter, now score with 22 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Asiasen faked it to Asiasen, who jumped up and over, uh, faked it to Kinnebrew, rather. Asiasen pulled it in, kept it, ran the bootleg, and now they are an extra point away from tying it at 33 with 22 seconds to go. Anderson to hold, reach with the critical attempt. seconds remaining in regulation. Buffalo 33, Cincinnati 33. Cincinnati has erased a 10-point deficit. Take a look at a terrific fake. Watch this fake. Oh, Johnson Everybody went up jumps for Johnson. Yep. Oh, boy. Nice little move on Rome, number 26 that time, too. Who says quarterbacks aren't mobile? Terrific play to tie it at 33. Hank Bull is probably thinking about that missed extra point right now. He knows if he had that right, that he would be sitting pretty. He'd still be winning this game. All he had to do was handle the kickoff and just eat the clock up. That came in the second quarter after a Rob Riddick touchdown with six minutes to go. Scott Norwood missed the extra point. They also had a safety along the way. Some touchdown passes and now the Esiason bootleg. And that's why with 22 seconds to go, we are where we were when we started this thing, all tied up. Do we see Mr. Kelly come to the rescue with the bomb again? What do you do with 22 seconds? <laughs> that's all you can do. He has, tw he has two timeouts from him. Reach kicks off. Rob Riddick at the four. Riddick hit it to 20 and down there. 15 seconds to go in regulation. Ron Simpkins in on the tackle. Pete Metzelar is very slow getting up for Buffalo on the special teams play. 18-yard return. Kelly has 14 seconds. This was coach talked to about every coach they had on the Buffalo's bench that time, trying to get find out what exactly they wanted to do. Well, Cincinnati has six defensive backs in the lineup. Crowd noise picks up again. They'll, they'll be content to force an overtime. Will run out. And so Buffalo, who had the 10 point lead and a chance to break the long road losing streak, they still have a shot to do it, but now they'll have to do it in overtime. We'll be back with a coin toss in just a minute. 33 33, the beginning of a 15 minute overtime period. If they play that scoreless, the game will end 33 apiece. Buffalo has won the toss. Buffalo will receive. 
And when we come back from a station break, the Bills will get the first crack. Overtime in Cincinnati. We'll be back. The terrific fake of Boomer Esiason forces the overtime, and the Cincinnati team just hoping they can get the ball once. About half the time, a team can take the opening kickoff in overtime and, and score, and the other team never gets the ball. And some pretty impressive numbers on both sides, Kelly and Esiason. With both of these offenses, I don't think we'll go the full time. These teams met in overtime five years ago, and Cincinnati won that day on a field goal. Let's see what happens five years later. There's a sense of urgency right now in all these players' minds because you know that the first team that scores wins. I was going to ask you, every regular season overtime you ever played, you lost with the Patriots. That's right. We never had any luck in overtime. But there's, a, there's such a sense of pressure of having to do it now. All right, Kelly, just foaming, <laughs> ready to get in there. Jim Breach starts the overtime. Kicking away to Rob Riddick at the three. Riddick across the 20, and that's where Kelly and company will start. Now, will we come out in front of the uh, conservative game like got on the first score, or will we come back like we opened up the second half and throw the... Throw the uh, the long downfield passes. We're about to find out. First down at the 21. Buffalo gets first crack. Buffalo burned them before. I think I try to burn them again on first down. Noise level picks up at Riverfront. Andre Reed in motion. Kelly to throw. Intercepted. Oh, Carl Zander with the critical interception for the Cincinnati Bengals. Kelly with a wink comes up empty. Let's watch the interception here as Carl Zander, number 91, at the top left of your screen. As Jim Kelly sees open man and throws it, and then Jim is right, fills the zone. Carl Zander steps right in between the two guys. The ball should have never been thrown, and I doubt uh, Mr. Kelly has learned a very important lesson. I doubt if he ever throws that pass again. His second interception, and it could cost the Bills the game. First and 10 at the 17. You know, what's confusing to me is it looks like Cincinnati is going to run another play instead of just bringing out their field goal team and kicking the field goal and taking away the win. They don't have their kicker in there. They are going to run another play. They were down 10, tied it, with a chance to win here early in overtime. Bill Johnson straight ahead. Johnson to the two. this hole on the left side of the Cincinnati offensive line, it just opens up. He cuts back behind it, right behind number 64, to, uh, Mr. Kazurski, number 78, Anthony Munoz. Cincinnati calls a timeout. First and goal to two. Will they kick the field goal to win it right here? We'll find Come out when we return. Breach is coming out. Jim Breach attempting to win it. Breach for the win. The Bengals have done it in overtime. And look at them go. Sam White has won in September for just the second time in three years. A 20-yard field goal. The Bengals and the Bills, their 18th consecutive road loss in dramatic fashion, 36-33. Of course, Sam Weiss here. Think he might get a little excited? Let me go hug my kicker. That's right. 
you know, it's a shame that either one of these teams had to lose today because there was a lot of, lot of hustle, a lot of work there. But Jim Breach came through when it counted. So as they did five years ago, they do it again now. A three-point win in overtime over Buffalo, and Kelly and White talk things over. Kelly performed again. He gave his Bills team a surprising 10-point lead, but in overtime, the interception by Carl Zander on the first Buffalo play, and smiles all around with Kelly and the Bengals, and then the 20-yard field goal by Jim Breach wins it for the Cincinnati Bengals in a wild one. There's the man who turned in the interception, Xander, second-year player from Tennessee. You know, Carl Xander had to have a big play. They, he came up with that, and he's got Xander written on the back of his Porsche, and somebody saw that car tag, and he didn't make that interception. Right. He'd go out there and scratch it up and soap it up. Now, let's take a look at the play that uh, Bill's fans will just add to their long list of devastating happenings. Kelly's first pass. First play of overtime, he was looking for Chris Burkett, Carl Zander, right to him. And the Bengals were in business. Look how Zander covered that ball up to keep him dropping it. He wasn't about to have a turnover on that position. And then the run by Bill Johnson, the timeout, quick 20-yard field goal by Jim Breach, and Buffalo Bills fans and upstate New Yorkers saying, well, they may win a road game eventually, but it's 18 consecutive times coming up empty on road trips. And this one, after leading by 10, our final score in overtime. The Bengals go to 1-1, one one, defeating the 0-2 Buffalo Bills, 36-33. The one thing, though, you can't look at Buffalo and say they didn't give it their best shot mm -hmm. because those guys were working today. You know, it was an exciting game, and I think everybody that watched this game had to enjoy it. It was a, it was a great one to be at. Most points the Buffalo team has scored in three years. They scored 24 in the first week of Kelly, and... 33 in the second week. Now they go home to face the St. Louis team that lost today. Uh, and Cincinnati with the short week will face Cleveland. Thursday night in Cleveland. Uh, exciting wild football game that the, the fans here will certainly remember as uh, Jim Kelly suffers his first two NFL interceptions. The second one, really the killer. Oh, that was the killer because even though it was tied, you know, they could have come back and, and, uh, and, and got it down the field, and their guy can kick a field goal or two himself. And uh, you don't see anybody's ball game in that kind of a situation. All right, Washington 2-0. The Raiders are 0-2. The Giants are 1-1, one one, as is San Diego. 20-7. Giants overtime with Buddy Ryan and his uh, old friends, the Bears, at Soldier Field. 10-10 in overtime. Dallas goes to 2-0, and winning in Detroit by a big score. That's impressive. And here, I should read OT, I believe. 36-33, Cincinnati the winner. Cleveland, whom these Bengals will now face in the Battle of Ohio Thursday, defeating Houston. That must have been an exciting game in the Astrodome. 23-20, the final there. Atlanta beating the Bills' next opponent quite handily. 33-13. And New Orleans goes to 1-1, one one. Green Bay to 0-2 at the Superdome. Saints coming up big, 24-10. How do you sum up this game, John Hanna? Well, let's start with the MVP of the game, Boomer Esaias, and the terrific fake and the bootleg, and that's what did it that forced the overtime. Budweiser, MVP. Here's the play, John. He just simply has a fake that throws everybody in the stadium off, excluding the Bills. And then he makes a little move on Rose to the winning score. He led the team all the way. He never gave up. They won it all. And so in overtime, the Bengals beat the Bills on a 20-yard Jim Breach field goal. 36-33 to for John Hanna. I'm Len Berman. Thanks for watching, and so long, everybody. The promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Air.